So this right here, welcome to the world of ideology. Ideology 2021 Halloween. And we're going to start with uh, the paper substrates. And then, of course, I will get into the embellishments and findings. And as I mentioned, there are some favorites that made their way back, but there is a whole lot of new going on. And I like to say that because especially for people that uh, that shop online or just look at a static image, sometimes you can look at something and go, oh, I already have that. OK, you might have that that product or that version of a specific year. Um, but I will talk about what stuff has new art and what stuff is the same art as previous years. This this might also help your budget uh, when you are working working through with stuff. All right. So we'll just kind of break through the pile. I'll, I'll set some of this aside. We'll start into this part and then we'll get into this part. All right. First one, we'll start very, very simple, very basic. This is a classic. This came back as as is. I think we modified maybe just a page. We took a page of it out that, that a lot of people didn't use. But this is the sticker book. So it has the great clippings, all these great cool things out of vintage books. This is all an inkable sticker material, so it doesn't have a gloss coating on it. So you can uh, take this out and ink it. You're going to see a lot of cool poems and things uh, that are created with this. Also, we have a portrait sheet, which I love, and these little masks that I want to call out because you might see some makes where photos have tiny little masks and you wonder where they came from. They came from the sticker book, which is, is great. And then, of course, some labels. So this is just a classic that we wanted to bring back. Another classic that we've kind of reimagined, this was an idea, I've talked about this uh, before. Uh, this is Ideology Craft Stock, but this is just a pack of black. Um, my friend Zoe Hillman uh, loved using the black from the original Craft Stock. She's like, I need you to do more, I need you to do more. And quite honestly, we did it, but we just weren't really sure if everyone else would, would want it as much as she did. And I'm happy to say that you guys do. So thanks for that, Zoe. This, of course, is the new version of craft stock, meaning it is no longer in the pad and it also is no longer textured. And that's what I'm really loving about this new craft stock. It is still a craft. I can't even flip it because it's in the package. It is still a craft core paper. So it's craft on the back and it is printed in black on the top. It is a matte black so you can sand it, you can ink it, you can do all sorts of things, but it doesn't have a texture. And that's really nice because you can do so much more with this, especially uh, if you're doing stamping or resist or like that frosted crystal chalk. This is a great substrate to do this on because of that smooth uh, craft stock finish. So I'm very happy that Advantis uh, wanted to bring this back. So we have just an entire pack of black craft stock. Yay. I love it. Then we're going to get into some other things. Now, worn wallpaper. We've brought in worn wallpaper year after year after year, but this year we have completely changed it. Um, and this is where things get really, really fun. I'm going to open some stuff that I want to open. I won't go through every single thing in the pack, but I just want to kind of hit the highlights of this. So worn wallpaper, this is something that uh, Paula really goes out and sources, looks for different wallpapers that we try to create from vintage patterns. And here's what we did this time. This is where I was saying like, Chris does his epic magic to this. So take a look at these cool water stains that we've added to this wallpaper. If you're not familiar with worn wallpaper, um, it is it is a paper that has a texture like wallpaper. You see that little texture? It's not a it's not your traditional linen texture. It's definitely much more fine and delicate. You can kind of hear that. It's just a, a white backed paper. It's not adhesive back. It is an actual wallpaper, but it mimics that. But look at the staining that we've achieved in this pattern. We wanted to go for something very haunting. So each one has a, a very different, very unique look to it but we wanted everything of course to look like vintage wallpaper look at this one yeah this is like something i don't know i love from like a haunted hotel right where you just see that drippy down the wall with that pink oh one of my favorites and the thing to know i know many of you are huge fans of halloween looking things but just if you're into vintage this is a great skew to use year round for vintage because it's just great backgrounds great pattern oh my gosh i mean stop it yeah that's all that's all scanning digital this is kind of like a cool vintage circus for those that love that whole big top i just love the staining that we did uh this is another beautiful floral just look at that magic in there oh my gosh all right so worn wallpaper you have all these different patterns of wallpaper and then we have the scraps the scraps are something we added this year which are really die cut pieces from uh the different wallpaper patterns these also have some staining but of course depending on where the staining falls see like on that one right you might get a little staining also made out of that same material you can see the texture in this for uh for some reason you can see it a lot more i like how the light hits that there's also these great trim pieces i know people love to use these um just the little join trims from 
actual wallpaper roll. So this is something that Paula just goes and sources and sources and tries to find it. And then Chris has to work his magic by scanning in little scraps and make it look like it does. So beautiful skew of worn wallpaper for Halloween. Then we have backdrops. And again, backdrops is the new direction of paper that Ideology has gone. Um, all of the paper pads, all of the previous year's paper pads, even the 12 by 12s that you might see in stores now, every paper pad within Ideology is being retired. So everything you might see in stores now, everything you might have, every collection paper pad gone. Everything is going to come packaged now. And backdrops is something uh, I wanted to roll out this year because I wanted to get away from the whole themey pattern of paper. There's a lot of companies out there that do great themes with uh, 12 by 12 papers and they're really for the, the scrapbook market. And that's good, right? So for those that need pattern paper, you have options out there. What I wanted to do is create something that was just different, something that an ideology maker would want to work with, which is just a piece of paper that maybe you could use on a card or in a journal uh, or create a mini book or even still use in scrapbook. But it was definitely more ephemera or pattern or vintage driven. It was all just cropped elements. So all of this paper, of course, is double sided. You can see for Halloween, we've got just some cool, cool things from cigar boxes to vintage ephemera, apothecary, cool science charts. Look at that. The Undertaker and Embalmer. And these are actual vintage elements. These are vintage pieces that we scan in, which is that I think that's what makes it even more exciting. There's also just some cool pattern paper, stuff that would have a small repeat. Marble, look at that black crackle. Here's a physician surgeon receipt. There's just so much in here. Some other cool things that we did, of course, for Halloween is we got to play with either the traditional side of Halloween, like this vintage catalog, or just things that had a very I don't know, kind of a grunge effect like this discarded library pocket. Look at that. Look at that cool patinaed metal background. So backdrops, really, this again is something that you could use year round. Of course, loving remembrance is a bit haunting, but there are pieces that you can still use like this electrical receipt. Very cool if you love steampunk. So it's very important to kind of always explore the things that are in a pack because backdrops, as I mentioned, it's not themey. So it's not like you're buying a Halloween pack of paper that you can only use as Halloween. That's the joy of backdrops. Certainly there are things that will play into the whole theme, like even just uh, planks of wood, but there's also stuff that you'll be able to use. This was one I already stocked up on because I know that I'll be using this paper all year because I just love the look of it. Look at that one, Ugh. cool panel. See, there's just pops of color. I could just go through everything. and everything has been touched right everything just has that either a cool staining some stuff if it's just naturally uh, stained we don't do any of it look at that cool marble book cover that's already been worn so you'll just see a lot of great elements look at that receipt from a casket company right and some this might be a little dark and creepy and if that is if that's you we get it but you can flip it over and we've always given you something that would be more usable right so we didn't put creep with creep because then you couldn't use any of it if you weren't into the creep so just keep that in mind that if you don't see something you like look at that this was something from Field Notes that we just love the design. We're like, we need to make that uh, a backdrop. So I could go on and on about how much I love backdrops, but I'm very happy that you guys uh, love this paper concept as well, because that is, well, that is the direction that ideology will always be in, in the paper realm, which is just creating this. These are six by 10 papers that you can use however you wish. All right. Then we're going to get into all the little die cut pieces. So of course, we're going to talk about paper dolls. Paper dolls is something that we work tirelessly on. Uh, we always try to update the cast. These are all photos that we purchase. So we, we do have people saying, oh, I've got my relatives and I'm happy to scan in a photo. And we appreciate that. But that's just not how uh, this collection works. This is something where we actually purchase real vintage photos that have uh, been sold or discarded and we turn them into paper dolls. Uh, the cool thing about this, of course, is it's a very eclectic mix. We try to be uh, really just a, as diverse as possible when we're finding these photos, but we do want authentic photos. Of course, it's all about the quality of the photo and do the people have feet and all of those things. And again, a shout out to, uh, to Paul and Chris who really work a lot on not only finding these, like Paul and I, it seems to be the everyday thing to look for photos, but also just the detail in, in going in and cropping out the backgrounds. Because these are all part of like, a vintage photo we have to take out you know tables or backgrounds this year we also wanted to include some portraits uh, we felt that portraits were really important uh, especially like for halloween sometimes you want something really uh, haunting so i love the vintage portraits 
you can see that there's everything from men and women and children and just and everything with Halloween. They just have a little bit more of, I don't know, like a creep side to them, you know, mysterious, not monster, but just, I don't know. It's something we always just look at their expression and go, okay, that one's going to go in Halloween. I don't know how we decide it. We just do. We just look and we're like, yeah, that's Halloween, right? You know, some are just, you know, like the man with the cat. I don't know why. Just is. Um, and of course, these could be uh, tinted. These could just be used. You can still go and cut these up and do all sorts of different collage. We love seeing uh, how people continue to incorporate paper dolls. There are some classics that came back, but this is a new cast for this year. So uh, definitely check it out. Also to note, like whenever you get your paper dolls, take a look at the die cuts. If you ever see these little areas, these small pieces, right? They are die cuts. So you can just take those out, right? We'll try to put as much detail as possible. But of course, there are limitations. But I do love them. I really do. There's some there's some great creepers. There's even like a, a group shot in there that's been cut out. Yeah, I like this guy, right? Could be holding like some sort of crypt lantern. I don't know. Ugh, love them. Okay, so those are paper dolls Halloween for 2021. I do love that. Um, he did say all, so I assume abandon. I, I did say all. Yes, that is correct, including abandon. Yes, all paper pads. So if you are a fan of abandon, I assure you there's plenty out there in the marketplace right now, so stock up on your favorites. That's why I like to tell you ahead of time so you don't have to be disappointed. You could have an, as much abandon as you want for life, right? That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's the beauty. As as you do. I do. Listen, if I have a favorite, I, I just stock up. It is what it is. So ephemera pack, again, something that we updated. Here's what we did different for this Halloween ephemera. Not only did we update the ephemera, and another thing to note is we really tried to start putting um, kind of a scatter shot of what's in the package on the back of this. You might often find this as a secondary image uh, for uh, on certain websites, but this is really cool. It kind of gives you an overview, but this is what we did. Normally, when we do ephemera, we will do a regular pack and we will do what's called snippets, which are kind of a mini version of this. We had a lot of people that just said, hey, you know, I, I like both, but you know, sometimes I don't want just snippets or I don't want just this. So we're trying something new. And what we did is we combined the two, meaning we gave certain things um, multiple sizes, right? So you might get a regular and a snippet of certain things that we felt you might want a different scale. So we're trying this to see how this works. I think this kind of uh, might be easier to just streamline for you guys, make it more cost effective that you have multiple sizes of things in a single pack of ephemera. Not everything has multiple sizes, so keep that in mind. It's just certain things that were like, okay, you might want, you know, a little number or you might want, you know, that butterfly or that moth smaller. So we included that uh, in the ephemera pack. As always, very cool stuff in ephemera. Ephemera is a, a matte finish paper, so it doesn't have any coating. It's the same paper as, as our backdrops, right? And you can see everything from cool labels to all sorts of stuff. But I wanna talk about a few things in here. So for those of you that like to take notes during a live to remind yourself later of what did he say about this for that? Here's a couple of tips. In here, you might find some really cool, I won't say you might find, you'll find it if you buy it, but it's not like it's a surprise whether it's in the pack or not. In the ephemera this year, you will find some cool pharmacy labels. These have been sized for the Sizzix matchbox die as well as the Ideology matchboxes that you can get. So if you already buy the pre-made matchboxes for Ideology, these will fit. And if you do the Sizzix matchbox die, these will fit. So these labels, you can turn those match boxes into cool vintage pharmacy boxes for all of your collage work. You're going to see several of those in there. So if you wonder like, you know, why are they all kind of that same, that same general size, see the whole stack. Now, you know, right? So there's some of those and even the square, same thing. We just did it to where it would fit. So you, sometimes you might want a vertical box details matter, right? <laughs> Miriam says she's that note taker. That's good. It's good to be the note taker. There's a lot of info in here. And then later you're like, what did he say? There's also going to be a lot of different labels, you know, bigger uh, background pieces, some florals, uh, cool cards, just everything associated with Halloween that we like. But then there were some other things. The makers, uh, the past few years, and it, st it started with, I mean, I actually don't know who started, but I saw books made by like Emma and Tammy B and everyone, they were taking papers and creating these little books in their makes in years past. And I thought, well, that would be really cool to kind of create that. So what we did is a lot of the covers that we use, say, for backdrops or things like that, we decided to scan in the entire book cover opened just as we do it. 
and create these little mini book covers. And you're going to see in the makes how the makers turn these into books. So I'm always inspired by the makers, right? The same way you guys are, I look and see what they do and I'm like, oh, could that be a product? I don't know. That could be a really cool idea. So the great thing about these, of course, is that um, you can go in and score them or just fold them. You can then take little cut pieces of paper you can glue them in some people stitch them in and you can make your own little mini library and you're going to see some very cool makes little haunted things and there's many many books different sizes different covers uh, and there's plenty in here to of course create with but i just thought it would be fun to do book covers of course you can always make your covers out of just taking paper but i think the fact that you have the the scale down size and that little spine right there just really cool really fun it's one of my favorites. This book is actually in my living room. It's a big book. It's a big laboratory book. One of my favorites. It's kind of a running joke with Paula because I want to put that book cover in every single pack we do. Everything. It could be an everyday collection. I'm like, we should put that book in there. She's like, no. How about we just save it? A uh, couple of... <laughs> Mario's laughing because he knows it's true. I'm like, I really like that book. Some other things. Um, I was just trying to find one. Oh, there we go. There's also some little ravens in there. You can see, again, the die cut. You can just poke those out. These are a size that they can sit on the shoulders of paper dolls. If you want to get your creep on, I'll just tell you about that because you're going to see in some of the makes these little ravens uh, that show up and that's what they are. They came from the ephemera pack, but so much stuff in ephemera, so much, so much amazing fun. I'm going to set this aside. There we go. Put that right there. Perfect. Okay. So oops, there we go. So if there's no ephemera snippets, uh, then what did we do? Well, Here's what I did. Now I will say, I love this skew. I love this skew so much that I can tell you right now, um, it is going to be added in the everyday line. Okay. This, these are snippets, but now it's its own collection. This is called Curator. This is a pack of, take a look, 233 pieces. Now don't go in and count that. I mean, that's, that's like way too much free time, but take a look at what's in here. Look at that wonderful, colorful array of what you get in this pack. These are all vintage labels from all sorts of different specimens, different collections, uh, from all sorts of naturalists. I mean, there's, there's so many different quirky labels. Some have handwriting, some are blank that you could stamp on or do rubs on. They are, they are such, such a collection, but some of them are super, super tiny. So I'm just going to carefully take them out. We've never made ephemera this small, ever, ever. And so I love it. Again, shout out to Chris because he has to create the die lines for all of these. But just take a look at some of these pieces, right? Look at that. Where you could put on a, on a bottle or you could put on a paper doll. You could put, you could make book covers out of these. You could add these to any of your little photos or if you like to do any type of, of specimen, you know, collection or fodder for any of your junk journals. Look at all these cool little elements. Some are die cut in tags, some are round, some are oval, some are shield shaped. There, there's a bazillion and they are all uniquely different. There are no duplicates in the pack. And that is what I love. I love all the different colors. I love the different typography. I love just having so many little mini trinkety things. I think these are going to be absolutely beautiful in makes. I really, really do. Now I say they're part of the everyday line, but that's as long as, uh, yeah, the factory will keep making them because that was another thing that <laughs> was really a challenge is to, uh, to actually create the, the tooling and dies for something this small, especially in an entire pack. So I would say if you love them, stock up on them like I did, but 233 pieces, that's going to last you quite a while or not. If you, if you're like, and you'll see from these makers, they have them hanging off of little strings. They have them. I mean, look at this one with the little ticket. Like, can you even look at that die line? Stop it. Ugh. That's really what I love is that it doesn't have, you know, when sometimes we want to create a, a border or a bleed around something, but most of the time, if it's ephemera related, we just try to go right up to that. So again, I'll keep gushing over Chris. He has to just go in and mimic the look and feel and the color. So when it's die cut, you never have that that crazy white edge, but beautiful. So ephemera snippets curator, that is the one. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about layers. Now the difference between layers and ephemera, layers are thicker and layers are coated. So layers are made out of the same material or paper as a paper doll. 
okay? Which means if you love the coating because you like to do crayons or you wanna do that frosted crystal uh, technique that I shared, that's really what layers are all about. So it's important to know, especially when you're shopping, you're like, well, what's the difference between ephemera and layers? The package, you know, it just looks like a pack of cut up stuff. Yes, but it's totally different. So in layers, we actually create things that are a little bit bigger scale because the idea of a layer is to be a layer, meaning you start with a backdrop and then you put a layer and then you add ephemera to that. So it's about building up. And so this allows us to create much bigger things, but having that uh, that coated substrate also means a layer could stand alone. Because a layer is thicker, it also gives you the ability to dimensionalize it with foam tape, right? Because you have that that rigid, it's not, it's not chipboard, but it's a rigid surface. So if you wanted to build up a layer with foam tape, it's going to actually layer better than ephemera will. Ephemera, because it's just really cardstock, it's designed to be glued or adhered to a surface. And that's why we do different papers. Maybe you didn't want to know that, but now you do. All right. A couple of things in here. We just, we did bring back a few classics, you know, the, the cool medical face. We've got all sorts of different things. But one thing I wanted to point out, I love this moon face. There's going to be these circles that you're going to see in here, right? There's all sorts of cool gauges. If you're into steampunk and you're going to see a cool make uh, that Vicky did that showcases what I'm going to tell you. But these actually fit the gauge frames that we released earlier this year. They're kind of those industrial frames with the little cutout window or opening. So these are nice. You could still use game spinners on some of these, like the little for fortune wheels. So you can put a game spinner. And I mean, there's so many cool things, but that's really why those circles are there. And I always like to talk about it now. So when we get to the makes, I don't have to reset the stage. You'll kind of connect going, yo, that's what he said. Then there's some cool die cut flowers. Look at these big, beautiful roses. Uh, just stuff that we felt was a little creepy for Halloween. I love this one for skill and amusement only. One of my favorite signs. Anything that has a little tattered edge we did. We did bring back the, the curtains. We've gone from like a deep red. I think it was purple last year. Then we went back to kind of this uh, almost like a burnt red. Again, all these pieces, they are die cut. So you can just go in and pop them out. Very easy to do. Okay. And this will fit on a vignette box. You can do all sorts of cool scenes with these. Love this guy. A little medical man cool creepy backgrounds or postcards. If you have the Sizzix retro TV die, you can put this scene in the TV uh, or create a cool backdrop, some game cards, some physicians, and then my new favorite. So this was a vintage photo that I purchased this year and absolutely fell in love. And again, a shout out to Chris because there was a person in this photo, right? If you've seen the, the vintage photos, like this is a canvas backdrop, guys. Look at that, it's all painted. So there was a person in there and I just said to Chris, I'm like, I bought this photo, but wouldn't it be cool if you could like remove the person? Because if you remove the person, then I could go in and put in a paper doll. I could use whatever paper doll I want to, to use and have them sit on the moon. And he worked his magic and he did that. So there's a lot of different ones, not just the Halloween ones. So if you have the everyday ones, the solos, I'm just going to try to see if I can grab one real quick. That could work. She could work, but I really want to find that couple. I have favorites. I always have favorites, but I'm probably not going to find it. Everyone knows when they're here, wouldn't it be cool? Well, that's it. <laughs> well, I, and, and you know, you say that, you say everyone, but I think everyone that also includes like Chris or the chemist or Tracy, yeah. where I'm like, wouldn't it be, wouldn't cool? It be cool? Yeah. So like, let's say you have a sitting person, take a look at that. So now you can, if this was collaged, because it's a layer, so this is going to go on a backdrop or in a tray, but see now you could have someone like sitting on the moon very cool. And we included two in there because it's just, it is a favorite. I absolutely love this piece, but there's so many different ones. There's little kids that can sit there. Um, I just think it's love, or you can just use it in and of itself. Absolutely. Absolutely love it. So those are layers. See, now I've scattered stuff. I said, I, I told Mario, I said, listen, I'm going to really try to try to keep things in order as I go through it. And he goes, no, you won't <laughs> because he's right. Cause this is the first time I actually get to dig in and share it with all of you, right? Uh, myself and the makers, we've all been just bursting at the seams for you guys to see all of this cool stuff. All right, next up that's new are transparencies. Now, the thing about transparencies, we played around with vellum last year. This year, we really wanted to take something a little different, something that we can achieve um, much better color on. And so now we have these transparencies. So these you can see beautiful, I would say rather thick, not, I mean, it's not like a thick acrylic. It's definitely a transparency, but 
it, you can see it has some meat to it. It's got shine on one side, matte printed on the back. We flood printed this because if you put tiny lights or anything behind it, it's going to light up beautifully. So you're gonna see this cool collage guy. That's one of the guys we used in layers. So we took a lot of favorites. There's an eye chart, there's an all over spider web, there's a cool skull x-ray, but then we even went in, where do you see these guys? Look at these beautiful butterfly wings, different from our transparent wings because we just took different art to create more realistic butterflies. And then are you ready for this? You might've seen them. Yes, bat wings. So cool. Now these could be cut apart. These will work on paper dolls so you can uh, scale them and you can really create whatever you want with this. But we did give some different sizes of bat wings in the pack. So this was actually art that we licensed of, you know, real butterflies and real bats that, that I guess sciency people use, right? So the beauty of these, as you can see, yeah, the color is just, it's unbelievable. So when you put it onto something, if you have these transparent wings, let's say layered over a background, you can see that because we flooded the back with color, they're still gonna show up from your background. And that's a little different than uh, how we've treated transparencies before. But I think you'll like these, really fun. And wait do you see, again, what the makers have done with transparencies. So many cool things. Yeah, I do love the bat wings. The creep factor is very good. It's always good to have a little creep factor, right? I agree. I love the creepy factor. I see Susan's like, I love the creepy factor. Yes, I agree, Susan. All right, we're gonna talk about baseboards now. So we're kind of stepping up from texture to texture. So this baseboards now, so we had ephemera, then we went to layers, which is coded, and now baseboard. Baseboard is actually a printed chipboard. It's almost kind of like a, a book board because it's very, very rigid, okay? So the cool thing about this, this is going to include the quote chips. So these aren't a separate SKU. They're now part of uh, these baseboards. They're long enough that you could go in and snip these. You can actually add fasteners or nails, or you can put hardware heads on there. We've included just some fun things. There's a hand, there's like the bullseye, clock faces, moon face, cigar box. Oh, hey, there's that book again. Yeah, I do love that book. So that's in there. There's the eye. I love this acid cover, really cool. And then we have these pieces as well. This was a favorite uh, last year, so we included two of them this year because we pay attention, right? Anytime uh, we see makers use something again and again and again, we're like, okay, well, maybe we should give them more than one in that pack. So it's a favorite. Now this actually has an outside frame. It's got a poison label and it has the mini frame that wasn't. True funny story. It will be very, very short and very quick. This was a piece that was supposed to be discarded. It was supposed to be garbage in, in the pack when we set up the art, right? But because Chris is such a genius, as I mentioned, with his bleeds to make everything look authentic and organic, he continued the look of this frame in the bleed and he continued the look of this in the bleed. And it looked so good that when these were manufactured, it was left in as a single piece. Well, I didn't know this, but Paula used it on her matchbox thing last year. I didn't even catch that. And so when we were when we were working on this, Paula goes, could we get extra of the frames? I'm like, yeah, sure. So we did these frames and she's like, no, this little shield frame. I'm like, well, there is no shield frame. Again, I was looking at a different set of art. She was talking about this piece. And it was just funny that something that wasn't really planned to be serendipitous, it is. So now we made sure that it stays in because it is a very cool frame piece. But that's the thing, all those little pieces kind of stay say as part of the pack. And I love baseboards because baseboards, again, they're rigid. They are a nice chipboard. They have a coating on the back and the front. You can use crayons, you can emboss on them. Uh, you can punch through them if you have a crocodile or something, but I like that you can also do fasteners and nails and all sorts of uh, different elements with this. Definitely don't try to sew through them. They are too thick for that. But because of their thickness, we thought we saw some art and first we were going to do this with layers and it's like, but wouldn't it be cool again? I'll use that. Cause I do say that you're, you're totally right. I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if, if we could actually take this art and create thick frames. So these are baseboard window frames and they're exactly what it is. We license this art from a photographer that takes pictures of old windows, but we really weren't sure if the factory was going to be able to die cut, that thin of chipboard, right? I certainly couldn't do that like, you know, with a, a die I would design. There's, there are specs, right? There are rules. So the cool thing about this is they were able to achieve exactly what we wanted. 
So these are vintage photos of uh, old, tattered, reclaimed windows with the most amazing die cut ever. So really, shout out to Chris, shout out to Tracy, because she just kept pushing back saying, yeah, you guys can do it, you can do it. Now these, as you're gonna see, many of these fit the vignette boxes, but they can go on the front of journals. You can put a transparency behind this. You can light it up. Uh, you can lay this on something and maybe carve out a book if you're into altered books. But there's so many different shapes and sizes of these cool windows. And there's even these two little portholes, right? So again, you can take your hardware heads to add dimension. You can go in uh, with, with different fasteners, but I love that. And yeah, guys, they are... They are thick. So you're going to see a lot of makers use mica in there to look like broken glass. Gosh, so many different things you can do with this pack. I cannot believe that I'm holding a pack of die cut window frames that are already chippy and already crackled and already amazing. Such a cool skew. Where do you see the makes on that? Unbelievable. All right. Another thing that came back this year, really glad that you guys like it, it is a vignette coffin. Now, again, the thing to note about this vignette coffin, there is a, a shelf that is attached in there. It's not removable, right? I suppose you could try it, but it's really not designed to be removable. It is nice because it allows you to create some type of vignette. You have a little shelf that you can put all sorts of different things uh, on the top of, but I'm just glad it came back for another year. I'm not sure if it will make it for another one, but at least we get one more year out of it. I do love that it's out of charred wood and it just gives us a great uh, substrate. I've seen a lot of people even do cool party things on it, right? Where they're laid on the table and you know they'll put little cups in there with candies and just makes for a fun tray as well. But I love the coffin vignette. All right, that was just the foundational pieces, just the foundational pieces. So deep breath everyone because we're going to we're going to crank it up right because we're going to get into this we're going to get into all of the trinkety bits the magic that is ideology the magic that is unbelievable sourcing unbelievable detail unbelievable specs that we really ask um, the factories to to produce because i like if i'm going to do something i want it to look as authentic and vintage as possible all right, so I'm just going to move this over to the side and we're going to bring it in kind of uh, bit by bit when it comes to the package stuff. OK, and really, I have there's no rhyme or reason. I'll try to maybe bring in stuff that we've done before just to talk about. So, of course, creepy eyes are back for another season. Uh, these are great eyes. People use them for so many different things, even like with Stampers Anonymous, you saw um, the cards done with the creepy eye. That's what we were talking about. These only come out at Halloween. So if you want to get your creep on, you always want to make sure that you have them. There are two sizes of the creepy eyes in a pack. There is the larger one and there is the smaller one, right? They are plastic backs. Some, some makers even go out and just pop this out because this is like a, like a domed sticker. So if you don't want the white, but you could alcohol ink this, you could do all sorts of cool things with, uh, with these creepy eyes. I do, I love them. They're a lot of fun. So they are back. They made it back for another year. Another thing that made it back are the urns. Now, these are a slightly different color. They're not as dark green as years past, but it is the same urn. So uh, if you like it, we change it a little bit. We wanted to lighten it because we actually found that a lot of uh, makers are buying the urns and they're using it at Christmas because this is a beautiful foundation for the woodland Christmas trees, right? So if you wanted to create something a little bit more magical at Christmas time, and that's why we lightened the color slightly. They're still vintage. They're still absolutely charming and amazing, but they're not that dark green color that they were last year. So just know that, you know, we still pay attention and we, we change things up. Skulls and pumpkins, these guys came out. This is probably gonna be the last year for these guys um, as a combo set. I might do maybe a multi-pack skull or something uh, next year, but I do love uh, these resin pumpkins and skulls because you can stack them. They're great for fillers, you'll see in the vignettes. I just love the creep of these. These are all hand antiques, so each one is going to be uniquely different as far as it's staining but even the detail down to the cracks in the skulls or just the, the vintage wash on the pumpkins, really cool. So these are skulls and pumpkins. Those came back. I love them. Let's see, what else came back? Did anything else come back as is? Ah, oh, this came back as is. I'm just kind of going through. Uh, mummy cloth, a favorite. Now people ask, what is that stuff? You have seen it, I'm sure, in the lives. <laughs> probably, you probably see it all year because um, all the makers love it. I love it. It was kind of our answer to cheesecloth that had a little bit more substance than cheesecloth. Cheesecloth is very, very fine. So mummy cloth is an inkable, dyeable, kind of woven, gauzy stuff. I always joke that I wanted to call it, oh my gauze, because it is, it's just, it is, it's cool stuff. You, you see? Oh 
my god. I should have called it oh my gosh because Tracy, can we change it? <laughs> it is it's a it's a cream color, so it's an off-white color already. Um, this will of course easily fray away just like that, but because it is that untreated, you could go in with your oxides, your stains, any kind of colorant, and you can dye it. But you see a lot of makers, they'll tie things around, but they'll even go in after they ink it and just start fraying it apart like that. And that's what they tuck into their makes, right? So when you see all those little strings and stuff coming out of a lot of makes all year, you're like, what is that stuff? It is, it is mummy cloth. Tracy said we can change it next year. AKA, oh my gosh. Yeah, because, well, <laughs> It's just cool and you get six yards of it. So yes, it, it did come back for another year because it sells out every single year. And then people, because you're stocking up on it, you're buying it and then you want more for next year, but it only comes out at Halloween and that's good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So next let's talk about some things that have been in the line previously, but we actually um, revamped them. So the first one going to be called broomsticks. Now you've seen broomsticks year after year after year. True story. These broomsticks are made out of a natural material, right? It is a, a sisal material, like what they make rope out of. And we've always had the, the handles made out of sticks or twigs. Now I always wanted um, a very kind of gnarly broom handle, but when we tried to just get the gnarly sticks, the, the factory didn't want to find gnarly sticks. Most of them ended up being just like straight, almost dowels. So what we did is we actually molded a stick. So these handles are made out of resin, uh, Paula found a branch on the tree in her backyard. We sent that off to be molded and sculpted. And yeah, that's what it is. So every broomstick is going to be the same cool nuggety handle. Just how they attach it is what's going to give it a different perspective or effect of that. Of course, these can be uh, trimmed and you can spray them with water and you can kind of crinkle them up. But now everyone will always have this great knotted handle. And because it is resin, you could still go over it with uh, distress paints or anything like that and alter these but now we have really good broomsticks every single time it's all about the detail right so it's like when these stop looking uh vintage it's like hey can we can we mold up a stick tracy's like yeah that'd be worth that money wouldn't it of course it would it's all about the detail you just say that to tracy of course it would another thing that we wanted to change um, are these guys uh, really been a popular thing from the makers. So you'll hear when the makers start sharing uh, about their makes, what we loved about the Boneyard. So we've had Boneyard year after year after year. It's always been kind of this shiny plastic, but take a look at them now. I wish I could explain the finish of these. They are almost like a, gosh, I don't know, almost like a satiny, almost velvety. They Well, they kind of feel more like just, just dried bone. They have no shine to them. It has all those little specks in there. There are two different sizes of bones in the pack. These are made of plastic, so you could cut these apart. But I just, I love the finish that we no longer have those shiny bones. And that was kind of a, a thing that, that nobody really liked. So I do, I do love the detail of this. I love the fact that these have a much more of an authentic feel, really. Any of the makers, I know that they're, if any of the makers are watching the chat, they'll, they'll tell you what they, because I was trying to explain it when we did our, our makers call it. I was like, you guys, where do you feel them? They're just like, oh, they just feel so cool. But yeah, they just have a, it, it is, it's like a suede finish. It's not rough at all. Um, it's a smooth matte finish, but I love it. So that's another classic that kind of, kind of came back reimagined. Then we have adornments. We decided to kind of mix this pack. So we have this great uh, skull and crossbone. And then we have this wonderful detailed spider. The little detailed spider has a loop at the top so you can hang from it. Uh, these guys, they are wonderful in detail. And I'll talk a little bit more about the scale of these and why we did it. We do sell these crossbones by themselves, but that's why we wanted to kind of mix it up for Halloween. The skew that they really work well with, I'm going to try to find, are these guys. So we have revamped the tombstones. In the past, the tombstones we've done are really small and really thin. We decided to chunk it up. So these are the new tombstones. They already come dry brush like that with the cool detail. They are made out of resin. So you could still go in and add your grit paste over the top and make it really cool and creepy and crypty. But you can also take this guy and of course this guy fits on top of this guy. Yes. Well, if you're like, well, hold on, there's a little space in the back. You have options. You can either apply your collage medium to just these little bone handles, or you can build up a little blob. Normally I build up with a little hot glue and then still use collage medium to glue it onto that. So if you're ever looking for a little bump, 
if you put a little hot glue on your substrate and then do some painting or whatever over it, then you can do collage medium uh, over the top of that. Some people even do just a little foam tape. So they are to scale of that. But you can use, if you had rubs from years past, you can use the remnant rubs. Uh, you can use the clipping stickers from the sticker book. There's a lot of stuff, but I love how chunky uh, and detailed and ornate uh, these guys are because yes, they just stand up. So if you're doing uh, any kind of cool uh, party or anything, it's just really fun that you could even put someone's name on it, right? Maybe put some bones, a lot of things we can do with, with these tombstones. I love it, love it. Okay, we're gonna keep going. I'm just gonna, now I'm just, I'm throwing caution to the wind now. Now I'm just gonna be grabbing new stuff. So these are Gothic frames. Again, with the portraits that we did in the paper dolls, we wanted to add uh, something that was a little bit more substantial. We've done a lot of metal frames in the ideology line uh, and we still have the metal frames. Those are always thinner. So the cool thing about Gothic frames, well, they're just that. They're a very thick resin. They are hand painted. You can even see from the back, the backs are just left unfinished because while well, they didn't need to be, you're gonna stick them on something. Uh, so they come with this antique gold. You could repaint them, no problem. Take your, your favorite paints and you can alter them into whatever color. But I like that you get these wonderful, cool Gothic things that uh, you could put photos in. You could have dried flowers come out of it. You can do all sorts. And yes, these could be used year round because they are a beautiful detailed frame. I mean, you can see all the relief detail in those frames, but we can only achieve that thickness uh, by doing them out of resin. Because if these were made this thick out of metal, they would cost a bazillion dollars just to, to have that as an embellishment and they would weigh a ton. Another thing, mini flare. Now we've had mini flare and regular flare in the everyday line and we decided to uh, combine this pack for Halloween. So these are tiny little buttons. They don't actually have a pin back, but they are made like a pin back see that so there's little tiny ones there's our little skull oops so tiny that they want to bounce off my pork chop fingers so these are all cropped there's a, a cool little moon face there's an eyeball I mean there's a lot of fun I love this little clock so these are great because you can use them for all sorts of different elements you can just add them to your collage work you can tie ribbon or uh, mummy cloth and you can glue those into the center they're just cool to have but they're just a, a flat back so you would want to put your collage medium on that metal ring and then stick that down to, to your surface. We have people do all sorts of fun things with uh, the flare, but that's the mini flare for Halloween. I love the little bit of, of Ledger and Poe. There's just, there's some really cool elements into this pack. I love the size of them as well. They are cute. All right, so next up, let's talk about these. Now, I hope you guys like these as much as I like these because I can't tell you a story about everything or this live would be six hours, but I wanted test tubes and I wanted them to be glass but I didn't want them to be test tubes in the sense of test tubes are long, right? And if you always have these long elements, they're very challenging to use in vignettes or on projects because they are so long. So we actually had to mold our own glass test tubes to spec. So thank you, Tracy, for allowing me to do that. I wanted them to be made of glass. So they are glass, they are corked, right? So you can use them this way. You can also use them as a wonderful, tall, skinny cloche, right? If you were gonna put you know, a flower or just anything small inside there. But I just wanted these, and you'll see that the makers just rocked it. So I'm so happy with uh, the size of them, but I just wanted some short mini test tubes and not just the longer ones, because if they were glass, you couldn't go in as a maker and just chop them off. So those are the test tubes. You get four of them in a pack, and yes, they are made of glass. So you can do it all you know, your painting, you can do your uh, rock candy on there to give them a little crackle effect. They're just beautiful. I love them. Uh, definitely, this is one of the things from the makers. It's like, can those be every day? Sorry, no, they're just Halloween. <laughs> they're, and they're just Halloween this year. That's for sure. Those, they're definitely not for next year. Okay, now we're going to get into some metals. Here's a cool little metal element. Just wanted to do something fun. We've done a uh, birdcage in the assemblage line, the jewelry line, but it's very ornate. It has a little door and all that. I just wanted something a little bit more open. Uh, you're gonna see from the makes, it allows you to put a lot of stuff in this cage. Uh, it is made of metal, but it's very lightweight. It's got a loop in the top that you can attach it with hardware, but you'll see everything from eyeballs in here to bones to uh, ravens. There's so many things that you can put in this uh, little cage, but it is great for any of your Halloween makes. I just love that little cage. And it is, it's a different cage than what's in assemblage because as you can see, we wanted this to be more open. So you can actually get stuff in there. You can bend the bars open like, oh boy, here we go. Love that bird cage. Then we did some new words. I'm a fan of words, but we wanted to totally change it up. I've been doing, you know, 
bands and tokens for so many years that it's like we've got to change it and this was this was a labor of love for sure i promise you that because we went through so many different uh versions of this these are quote seals and these are actually molded from a wax seal so you get all that cool little blobby stuff but these are metal so these are made of solid metal there are four of them and they all have stamped quotes inside so for halloween double double toil and trouble in secret of the shadow lies magic to behold. The moon has awoken. The spell is now broken. Something wicked this way comes. These are great because you could go in with acrylic paint or distress crayon, rub that in and add color into it. But these are just a great embellishment because of the texture and detail just to glue onto something. If you're gonna tie again, ribbon, it's a great thing to cover the knot of your bow or ribbon. And I just liked it. I thought it was something different than just the flat coins that we've done in the past. Something that's definitely more of a gluer. I love these seals. Then we did word plaques. And the word plaques, I was actually inspired by this font. This is a font that I see at Disney a lot. I love the classicness of it. And the other thing we decided to do different on these plaques is redesign it. So instead of it just being kind of this, this oblong design or the one that has like the little loops at the end, we actually created this cool, almost like an art deco edge to it. It has the eyelet, but if you notice, these are raised. All of the other bands we've ever done have innies, right? Like these, where the words or the quotes are stamped into this. This time I wanted to see what would it be like if we did this as an Audi, right? If the word and all the detail were, were raised and the background even has a texture. I don't know if you can notice the metal behind the words. It's a very, very fine texture. Wait till you see how these alter with color, with crayons and paints. So really fun stuff from Found Objects, Bone Collector, The Apothecary, and Curious Things. These, of course, could still be tied on or use fasteners, but the Audi of this and that new font is epic. Epic, epic. All right. Then we've got these guys. Take a look at these beauties. Probably one of Mario's favorites. He keeps talking about these. Like, I can't believe you guys did this. So oh, this, this was completely designed, and this was drawn by Chris. He drew this, and, and we wanted to create... Uh, a very cool ornate gate. Now they're packaged like this because, well, we need to keep the, the brand visible and you could certainly use them like this, but this is really how they can go together. So the cool thing about these ornate gates, they are cast of metal. They are flat on the back so they can be glued to something, but they are sturdy enough that you can attach them and do all sorts of cool things with them. And you'll see in the makes uh, how that can be done. And that's the beauty of these gates. They can be painted and grunged and grimed, but they are beautiful with the detail the finial and everything about the metal just being different layers that is done intentionally so it has the ability to hold uh, different mediums like grit paste and and grunge and things like that and you do get the set that's how they go but you can use them however you wish the other thing that we wanted to add are these cool locks and keys now these are not functional locks but they are designed to look that way uh, the cool thing about these there are two different size locks in the package that are already antiqued and have kind of those little those little bolts those little kind of rivety things uh, that are in there right you can see on here that detail of the keyhole it's the same on both sides so if you're hanging it, it doesn't really matter how it spins that's going to go all the way through it but again these do not open they're designed to be an embellishment and these come with these really adorable little skeleton keys so you can see and you'll see from the makes that you can wrap chain around the gates and any kind of chain you want and hang on the locks and keys and you could just do some cool things but i really i picture people probably just taking this and there's probably some people that would make jewelry out of it right they're just they're very charming so those are the adornment locks and keys and again it's a halloween skew so these are halloween only so when they're gone they're gone all right next we're going to move into um a new favorite now um Traditionally, we bring out baubles every year. If you're a fan of Christmas stuff, you know that we have baubles and baubles are these wonderful round pearls. And I thought I would really love it if we can create a clear version of baubles. These guys, these are called bubbles and these are acrylic spheres. There are no holes in them at all. These can be alcohol inked. They could be used as is. And where do you see how the makers use them? Because yes, the cool thing about this is we can do very cool things with these bubbles. We'll talk about that in a minute. These are really designed to go with either by themselves, but it can also go with this new cauldron. So these are resin cauldrons. This is how they come. They are hollowed out on the inside. They're already brushed with uh, an antique silver just to give it a little tarnished look. But again, you can totally refinish it if you want. 
But these are very cool because you can fill them with all sorts of things, the cauldron. One being bubbles, right? You can do some really cool stuff with this and you're going to see uh, the detail a little bit more. I'm not gonna spoil it yet, uh, but you'll see in the makes how you can combine bubbles and cauldron. This, guys, I'm telling you, this is an all year thing. This can be used for beach. This can be used for ocean. You're gonna see candy made out of this. You're going to see crystal balls made out of this. You're gonna see uh, colored bubbles. You're gonna see snowballs made out of this at Christmas. These are cool and they are only available uh, during Halloween. So it, it's all the same size as the bobbles. They are just clear acrylic and they are stunning. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see. Then he just makes me happy, right? Childhood memories activated. These guys, these jack-o'-lanterns are little resin pumpkins with a wire handle. So the handle is just folded in the back right there, right? And they are all hand antiqued. So they all have that cool staining, okay? You could remove this if you want. You could just pull out this wire if you didn't want the wire handle. Because it's wire, you can also shape it. So if you were gonna put it in the hand of something or you wanted it hanging off of something, I just love this. This makes me just giddy as a kid for Halloween. I absolutely love it. And you may have seen uh, his face pop up in a lot of sneak peeks. He's just adorable. Could you have little bubbles coming out of him? Yes, and flowers coming out of him? Yes. But what would I always wanna put in a plastic pumpkin? Well, candy, of course. So these are called confections. Now these are not edible, these are not candy. They are made out of clay. Um, they are amazing. These are all handmade, you guys. Um, there are some little warnings on there because of the type of clay that it is. It's just a warning that you shouldn't eat it. Okay, that's what it's about because they, they look amazing. There are the candy sticks and the little candy drops. Now, these are made out of a, a pliable material, but they're not meant to be like, they're not erasers, right? But it's very cool because if you put it in a make, you don't have to worry about it just breaking off, but they're not designed to like be folded or, or tied around each other. You will see that these are inkable, these could be glittered. You could put glossy accents and throw some rock candy on there and make these really sparkly. But these are all hand done. So the little twist in between or the little size of them, they just, see, there you go. They, they, they will change slightly because everything is hand rolled and hand cut, even down to these. These are swirled. And then instead of just having a chop like a, you know, a normal clay cane would be, these are rolled so they have that wonderful little detailed edge and they could be wrapped and they create just the cutest thing. So yes, these are scaled that you can put them into your jack-o'-lantern. You can have candy pieces all around. They are beautiful. So confections, awesome. And, and again, you'll see what, what the makers have done with confections. So the black and white, and they could be, they could definitely be altered. Love it. Favorites, favorites. Okay. Now, as we went through, I was inspired last year by, by one of the makers, Tammy B. And a shout out to Tammy B uh, for being so gracious in me doing this. So she shared with us her technique for drippy candles. And I even did like a video on it. She's done many tutorials. So you can create these by hand. She shows how to roll them out of paper with thread and use hot glue and paint. And they are wonderful. And any maker that made them last year, you know that not only are they fun to do because you can create so many different sizes, but they are in fact a labor of love. Um, and so I thought I would really love to be able to replicate this as long as we can achieve that real authentic look. So these are drippy candles. These drippy candles are made of resin. Again, 100% inspired by Tammy B. Um, I hand created each one so they would be different within the pack. So the drips would be, dif would be different because you get three large, three medium and three small. The wick on the top is actually a wired thread because I wanted the wick to be authentic. You can cut this so you can cut it to whatever size. And then if you just touch the top, you see how you can fray that thread. It's all in the details, you guys. A candle needed a wick. So you can do whatever you want. They already come with an antique wash, but you could paint them, you can change them. Uh, I love the drippiness and really there's the the Tammy B thumbs up just made my made my heart happy because yes, you can still make them, but it's very cool if you're gonna use a lot in a scene that you can just use these drippy candles uh, out of resin. Now with this, of course, it inspired another idea to go with it, and those would be candle stands. One of the things we did last year when we were playing with all these drippy candles is we were clustering them and putting them on top of the skulls and, and all sorts of elements, and I thought I would really love some some stands to put them on. So the candle stands, there's two small 
and one, or two short and one tall, I should say, in the pack, okay? They kind of look like game pieces. They will sit on a surface that you can put a drippy candle over the top of, like the candles are sized where they could fit on top of this. I would suggest starting with hot glue because hot glue is going to allow you to kind of position the candle a little bit better because the candles themselves, because they are hand done, they might have a little, a little ridge, so they might not sit totally straight, but you might be fine with a little crooked candle because it's going to be straight at some angle, right? Uh, you could still use collage medium, but I, hot glue is kind of in my go-to. These could be altered. These stands have also been used for a lot of other things, right? We've, uh, you'll see that makers have put other things on it from, you know, a bubble or you could put a cauldron or you could do all sorts. You could even use them as little support beams. So that's the cool thing of these candle stands. They could be uh, a little support stand for so many other things, but perfect for drippy candles in that. So absolutely cool. Love it. Love it. Tammy B, you are my hero. But these are still fun to make. I'm not going to lie. I loved making them. They're big fun. And then, of course, we have tiny lights that we, we brought back for Halloween. Now, what we decided to do different this year for tiny lights, last year's tiny lights were purple and orange. This year, purple and green. So in the tiny lights, when you get them, you want to make sure that you remove that little clear tab. There's a clear tab. You have to pull that out. That's going to expose uh, the battery. The tiny lights already come with batteries. They have a switch on them. Turn them on and off. This is the green. Look at that. What a cool green. Wonderful elixir green. And then, of course, everyone's favorite, this purple that kind of looks like black light. It's just a, it's a very, very cool uh, purple, which means you can replace the batteries. You simply pop open the compartment and you can change out the batteries, right? Now, a couple of things. If you ever use tiny lights, including the regular clear ones, and they don't seem to kind of work or they feel a little flickery, a little short, it usually has to do with the contact of this metal piece. So all you can do is just take your finger and just kind of gently bend that forward on both sides to make sure it has contact with the, the batteries and then of course you have your tiny light so yes purple and green okay love love them and i love that chris put that marking on there uh they are tiny so he's like how tiny very tiny but then of course with lights it inspired me to do our final skew and then we're going to get into the makes and that is this guy so this lantern was the final thing that we were able to do it went through so many revisions a million thanks to tracy for letting me change it probably four or five times uh, because I knew exactly what I wanted. I knew how I wanted it to look. And I just wanted something that um, just had a very cool nostalgic look. It could look like it belonged in a crypt or a graveyard, but it could also be great for Christmas or the holidays. So this lantern is made out of metal. It is not plastic. It is cast out of metal. The lantern here is a solid piece of acrylic but you can see that it's got a core in there. So all the detail from the vents to uh, the wire handle that you can change, even that cool brush finish. But one thing that made this very special and how I wanted it to be is it's got a hole in the bottom and it has a notch out of the back. And that means that if you want and you have your tiny lights, you can light up the lantern. Now I know people freak their freak every time Mario tells me about that in the chat. And really all I can say in the kindest way is to to get over yourself. The whole idea with tiny lights is to provide you lights that you do what you want as a maker. Meaning if you want to use the entire strand to wrap around a project, you're happy with the tiny lights. If you want to just light up the back of a photo and you need to trim off some of the extra, trim them off. They're not being wasted because you still have your set of tiny lights. And that's no different for the lantern. The lantern can really only fit three tiny lights at the end, which means all the rest you need to cut off. And that's where people are like, but I'm wasting those. Well, think of it as like a wire embellishment. You cannot rewire it. You cannot attach it to another battery pack. It's just, it is gone. But you still have your set of tiny lights, the same tiny lights that you you purchased, you're, you're getting use from. So whether you're lighting up three bulbs or a bazillion, it doesn't really matter, right? And yes, Andy, I say that really with the kindest. It was the best advice I got early on in my, in my making life, which was like, quit Quit judging yourself or limiting yourself with what you think you should or shouldn't do and do what is going to make you happy. So when you cut the tiny lights, you want to cut them off from the end, the end opposite of the battery pack. And you can kind of wrap around as many as you want. Maybe you only want one or two to light up. But how it's designed is that you can take a light. In this case, I just want to show you I have three wrapped in there. And this wire is so fine that you can wrap around to kind of make that little cluster. There is then a tiny light you can kind of see right here. It's next in the chain. It is what it is, but you won't see it. And this is designed that it can go into that opening in the lantern, right? So you just kind of fit that in. So if you don't want your lantern super bright, 
you can just do one bulb, but that's where that cavity is inside. So you see how that cavity just stops midway? So this way your light is always going to stay right where it needs to be. This little notch is so the wire can go out of the back of the lantern. So if I want, I can tuck that light bulb in there so it's not seen in my make. And then there's that piece of wire so I can glue my lantern uh, into my project. And then you can take your tiny light and look at that. I mean, stop it right now. So this could be lit up in clear. If you have, this is the orange one from last year. So if you have an amber one, you could alcohol ink your tiny lights. You can light it up green or purple or whatever. And this is very bright. Why? Three lights in there, right? So if you're doing something and you want a little bit more of a romantic vibe, right? Or something a little bit more, I don't know, maybe you're going to do something outdoors or camping or whatever. You could then just put in one bulb. So before you go in and, you know, oh, I'm just going to cut them all off down to one bulb, just play around with it. I normally play around on the end that I haven't cut off yet and see how many bulbs I want, get my little twisting thing down, and then I'll start doing that on the end. So I have it. But I do love the fact that it's going to give me the ability to light up that lantern. Absolutely adorable. Do you have to light it up? Of course not. It's still incredibly cool just to have a tiny lantern. This could be painted. This could be glazed. I absolutely love it. It's probably one of uh, one of my favorite things because I never thought that we would have a metal, uh, you know, I've seen the, you know, the dollhouse stuff where the stuff is, you know, plasticky or it's only like this big, but this is, this is to scale that can actually light things up and create a cool effect. So to me, again, a shout out. Light, just like cake and frosting. There you go. I Mario, Mario just likes I the frosting. That's it. Frosting. He just likes the frosting. But, but that's the other thing. And I, I really, I don't say that to be condescending ever to a maker. It's just a reminder that sometimes we need that we're just making excuses of why we don't want to use the stuff that we buy. I don't get that. You buy it to use it. And if you want to light up a lantern and you only need two lights, well, then you're still using it. So to me, you're putting it to, to the same use of, of why you bought it. All right. So that's my little trinkety tray. I do like to keep my stuff out when I'm in a making season. I talk about this all the time because then I get to use all of my stuff. It's just a, a muffin tin, but you do you, right? If you want to keep stuff uh, in little drawers or packages, fine. I just kind of feel that in the making season, if all of that stuff is tucked away, sometimes you don't use it. Now, real quick, because I know I've been talking for, well, over an hour just on product and I still have to get to the makes. Just a few things that I'm going to highlight that are part of the line, right? This is part of the everyday line that I don't want you to forget about in your Halloween makes. One would be snow globes. Why? Because snow globes are very cool because snow globes, you can create, um, something vintage. This is something I did last year. There's a tutorial on my blog. You can do a crystal ball, right? So there's the purple tiny lights in there. You can see some drippy candles before we had resin ones. This is just a vignette box, but you can light up a crystal ball. So if you have these left over from last Christmas, because they only come out at Christmas or when they come out again uh, this Christmas, remember you can do a crystal ball. Glass skews. These were last Halloween. They are part of the everyday line. So laboratory, if you have those in your stash, use them. Apothecary bottles. These are amber ones with little poison labels. Great for the new curator snippets. If you have them in your stash, use them. If not, they're part of the everyday line. Cork vials. If you're looking for all sorts of different bottles, part of the everyday line, use them. Tiny vials, really, really tiny. Perfect for all those little curator snippets. Again, use them and you're gonna see some great makes with it. Cork domes, right? So these are almost like the test tube, but shorter. And these are a little wider. Again, perfect if you're going to do a little ephemera, little snippets, or you want to do shorter test tubes or mix them with the new Halloween test tubes. Cork domes, part of the everyday line. Use them. Toadstools. These were part of Halloween. They were so popular that we put them in the everyday line. Maybe you had them. Maybe you used them. Maybe you haven't. If you don't, use them. Great for Halloween. The entomology adornment. Same thing. Halloween skew that became part of everyday. Fantastic. And these are great reminders because you may have bought them last year for Halloween, but now that we put them away in their safe little area, you might forget that you have it. But if you use the index, you could remind yourself that you have these everyday items. Really important. I talk about flowers a lot. You're going to see in the makes. These are bouquet. These are paper flowers that are inkable. So all the black flowers and cool grungy stuff you're going to see in the makes, part of this. If you have them, use them. Then we have velvet trims. Again, we released seasonal velvet trims initially, and then we created these colorways, part of the everyday line. You're gonna see some beautiful things that incorporate some great colors for Halloween. So if you have velvet trims, well, you know, use them. They're beautiful. And then lastly, this is not an ideology skew, but I wanna talk about it because 
Somebody got the memo out there. Wasn't me, but I love that they did it. So many makers use this on their ideology makes this year. It was quite surprising. Uh, these are the etc. trims from Stampers Anonymous. There's uh, spider webs and bats, and I talked about this uh, last week when we did the Halloween Stampers Anonymous, but I just wanted to remind you, these are not part of ideology. These are from Stampers Anonymous, but they are available. So when you see these kind of cool things coming off of the vignettes, that's what they are. So without, without any hesitation whatsoever, I'm going to just jump into the makes. I will say that I'm a little nervous because having not seen these in their entirety, I just want to do the makers proud. I really do because the makers, gosh, a shout out to all of them. As always, their makes will be featured on timholtz.com on the blog. So you will see photos of all the makes from the makers, their names, links to them. I encourage you to follow them throughout the season. I know many makers have been sharing great sneak peeks this whole season um, as, we lead, as we lead up to the launch for Halloween and they're gonna continue to do that for Christmas. But many of them aren't planning on doing tutorials for the makes or, or in-depth walkthroughs of their makes until it gets closer to uh, the Halloween season. So if you don't follow them and you don't have them on notifications, you're gonna miss out on kind of learning more of the details. It doesn't mean all of them have tutorials, so uh, limit the expectations, no pushy pushy, uh, but definitely check it out. So this first make, this is from Paula. And I wanted to start with this one because it just uses so many of the elements that I talked about from the backdrops to the paper dolls, to the portraits, to the flares. Uh, this is just using an ideology vignette box and some hardware. There you can see uh, some of that I love that little vintage lace in there. You're gonna see all sorts of different trinkets and elements added. So we're gonna start with this and I'll, I'll hold this up because it's all about presentation, right? Paula Paul's like, start with her, have the remembrance card in the back because you can see uh, what we were talking about, about adding elements and then having layers, right? That layers can still provide a backdrop or, or pieces to this. So here you can see, this is an entire little deck of cool cards. Now, some people really stick to uh, the artist trading card size. You don't have to, you can just make your cards whatever size you want. You can add all sorts of little bits. So I'll just quickly go through and show uh, just some of the highlights. I love, of course, seeing the tinting on here. I love the addition of the flare and you're gonna see a lot of that great curator from the ephemera snippets. And of course, the little stickers in that sticker book, the clippings. The cool thing about paper dolls, look at the raven on his head, love that. Uninvited guest, here in the back, there's some of that worn wallpaper. Look how perfect it's just stained. And then of course, layered over a backdrop. And you could always start with a foundation. You could start with a thicker foundational card, whether you're cutting up a mixed media heavy stock or watercolor and then glue your papers to uh, using your collage mediums. Some things can just be leftovers or scraps or cards. I love seeing again, just little tabs, using your layers, using ephemera. This is a great make for just exploring your creative ideas and stitching together your different little snips of backdrops and wallpaper Paper dolls, look at the transparent wings. Do you see what I was saying? How it doesn't matter the color of your backdrops. These new transparencies, they're just such a pop with color. And I love that. Things are not what they seem. Creepy, right? And look at that. You're gonna see, I'm telling you, curator for the win. And I love the little threads. Can we just talk about that? The departed, beautiful little wallpaper snippet right there. Again, just kind of curled up. It's all about the details. Watching and waiting. And Paul is really good about sharing all of all of the little extra close-ups. So I'm gonna blast through these because I don't wanna give everything away. There's a little mask from the sticker book. We all know that. Cool with that Raven. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that with the tiny attacher. Tiny attacher for the win, guys. Beautiful. So many different pieces and just adding that little extra color on the paper dolls really ties into the wallpaper, the backdrops. It's very cool to see it all come together. That's what I was saying to uh, Chris and Tracy at Advantis. I'm like, when you guys see how all of these fragmented ideas come together in the makes, that is where the magic happens. So this is a, just a great, look at him, look at that eye. I told you, that backdrop, that's everything right there. Oh, and that marble cover. See how putting it all together, so much inspiration. Look at that little Halloween mask, so cute. And nothing else, that's where all these little words are coming from, that sticker book that I shared at the very beginning, and that's where those little masks come from. A lot of people ask about how to anchor paper dolls. Uh, Great examples of doing that when you're collaging. Use your ephemera as like an anchor point for like where their hands are, or where their feet might be. Uh, that's a, a very awesome element. This is cool. I haven't seen this, so I have to I have to dig in, right? Paul's like, put the stuff back in right, Holtz. Yeah, no, it'll be good. It will, it will get back in one piece, but okay, I have to take this one. Oh, I have to take this one too. Oh man, Pete. Okay, 
Love that. Look at that with the eye on that layer. What a great addition to that layer piece just by adding the eye. Cool. Look at the bat wings. That's what I was grabbing for. Oh my gosh. They're so cool. Oh, I love that. Dorothy liked anything spooky. Heck yeah, she did. Very cool. And then look, this is Paula's favorite with that rabbit because she's just creepy with that rabbit. Beware. Yeah, we know. Oh, awesome. All right. A great way to kick that off, right? All of that with paper dolls, backdrops, ephemera, snippets, layers, the, the mini flare, all those things. And then even little details like part of the everyday line. See that little tiny clip. It's all in the details, but this is just showing you, look at the key that she's holding from the lock and key, right? Amira was a curious woman. It's, it's really important. Take your wallpaper, take all those pieces. And when you don't know what to do with it, cut it up. Just cut it up and reassemble it. That's, that's what's going to, I think, allow you uh, so much creative freedom to kind of go. So buckle up, guys. It's going to get intense. It really, really is. So many different makes. So this make, Vicky created this. This is pure grunge heaven for me. I'm going to try just to kind of show you the detail the best I can. This is in one of the ideology display domes. It is a glass dome. Um, I love that she's inked the outside. There you go. I'm trying to kind of cover that ring light just so you can see. But look what's inside there. Vicky, I don't know how you got those gates to fit in there, but they are covered. There we go. Look at all that grime and grunge on those gates and how she just paired them together. And then there is that tombstone. I love that she used that seal under the skull. There's some drippy candles in there. There's that bone just kind of sticking up out of the ground flip it around. There's a lock. I mean, come on. Cadaverously creepy. So, so good, right? And then look at this. Curious things. See what I mean about those new word plaques? And I love this little wiry. Vicky does all sorts of cool metal wiry things. I love the little frayed uh, burlap that comes out of the bottom. But look at that. Something wicked this way comes because you can smear color inside those quote seals. But see all the details? See how that tombstone is more important? Everything is to scale now. So when you want to make, this is just creepy. And I would display this in my house and put like a candle or a very soft light behind it because I would rather have the light come through it as like a freaky shadow than even have this thing uh, light up. Absolutely cool, right? Pure grunge magic. Ugh, those gates. All right. Yeah. Everyone's talking about like my box. Probably that one. Yeah. <laughs> right? My pile, my pile. My pile, my pile. All right. So this next one, and really guys, these makes are, they're just, they're massive. Some of them are just, I don't even, I don't even know how to, how to describe them. All right. So this one is, this is from Tammy and I'm just trying to look at the back cause she's got lights in there. So I think I'll just show you before I light it up and then I'll just turn it over to light it up. I'm not going to try to do anything magic from back here. So Tammy created this one. Um, the, the great things, a lot of these makers, I'll tell you this, and I always explain that because I can't do everything justice in a live, but many of the makers have like stories behind this, right? So this is like stories of all Tammy's makes that she's sharing with me or Marlise or Susie. And they, they kind of give me some tips as much as I would love to cover everything they have. I can't, but I do read them and I try to cover the highlights, but that's the thing that you really need to go to their blogs or watch them on YouTube as they talk about their makes, because there's so many details that I probably don't even notice, right? That's the whole idea. So Tammy said that this one is, this is metamorphosis. And this is like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde from like left to right, like talking about the laboratory. I'll just read it. <laughs> he just said uh, in his lab, he's making his potions. He might know that things might turn out badly. So he is prepared <laughs> in the top drawer is the key to the locks in the third scene. And in the bottom drawer is some poison. The study was destroyed when the dark, uh, when he drank the orange potion, lots of details, but note the clock at 1031 and the butterfly signifying metamorphosis. Do you see what I mean? Like, would I've noticed that? No, but now I do. Now I see it, right? I just think it's, and like, look at the detail in that, what she did with the portrait, just kind of scratch through, just amazing. The lock chamber has a hidden surprise behind the little door. Um, I'll show you that in just a second. So let's just look at the details. You can see the use of those little books from the ephemera pack. Oh my gosh. You can see the laboratory part of the everyday line test tubes. You can see all of that wonderful curator. Look at the little dresser with the, the hitch fasteners on there. See the cage, how it can be bent and just gnarled around. I love there's that potion where he said that was drank. That's just kind of dripped and oozed out. I love how 
like everything is kind of so pristine when he's doing it. And then clearly uh, the change where things are starting to get destroyed. The books are being thrown around. Like, look at those books with those book covers. See, Chris, that's why we did those book covers. Cool. The little raven in there. Again, drippy candles. These little ledges, these are all etc. right? Those pieces, that's what I was talking about from stampers. All these little labels, you're going to see, like now you have the ability to put labels on everything. And then we have, I love these, these little tin tops where we've got, this is all stuff from the original line, right? Where we've got different gears. I love the little chain. There's the lock. All right. And the entire box, you can see, this is a vignette uh, divided box, right? So you can remove your compartments and panels. And I love the, the whole configuration of this. I love seeing all of that paper around there, that marbled paper. But then of course she has tiny lights in here. So I'm going to light this side up first, right? There we go. There's the green. Look at the bubbles in there. Did you guys notice them? I'll turn it off again. Remember, those bubbles can be alcohol inked. So alcohol inking those bubbles allows you to light them up. That's the cool thing about having it clear is that the clear really allows any color that you ink them or light to completely transform that. Okay. Then when we get on this side, here's where the purple lights and look at how she did it just behind the door. Oh my gosh. Right. Very cool to have that, that door just kind of lit up. And then that's where we just open this up because she used a little ideology hinges right there. And we open that up and look at that, his creepy eyes in there. And there's that, that baseboard porthole. Wowza, 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 wowza. So cool. So creepy. So there you go metamorphosis right a lot of lot of cool details and the thing to know and and i'm going to say this now and i'm going to say it at the end as well the makers when they're making they have the ability to just be as extreme as they want to be or as calm and mellow as they want to be i should say all the makes are really designed to inspire you never intimidate and those that take it as intimidation Honestly, I just feel, and again, I'm not trying to be rude in any way. I just feel that as an excuse to a maker when they say that they're intimidated by a make that they don't even want to make. I just, I see that as an excuse. We all start somewhere and we all do what we do. You do you. And you can be inspired by this and you can take any element of the idea. But to say that you don't want to make because you can't make this is just saying you don't want to make it. And I think it's really important that you give yourself that permission to do you, embrace you, and celebrate your creative style and be inspired by the makes and be inspired by elements and try it. The only way you're ever going to explore, and we were having this conversation with some other makers earlier, the only way uh, that you're gonna be able to explore is to start somewhere. This way you can look back in your making career and go, wow, I've, I've come a long way or I've changed my style or whatever that is, but you can't change anything that you don't start, right? So you've gotta start. So look at this beautiful panel. Emma, Emma created this one. There you can see that etc. cetera spider web, the little creepy eye. I love seeing that, that layer with the moon. There's a little paper dolls, a little touch of those toadstools in there and the seal. So see the moon has awoken. The spell is now broken. Great way to use that seal with that. Wouldn't have thought. And look at these beautiful little bubbles that are just tinted. They just look like, you know, magical bubbles floating through. There's the mummy cloth I'm talking about. Just kind of going in. So treat these as inspiration really celebrate the makers and celebrate you as a maker because we are all makers, right? Makers are not like a, a selective organization or club. We're all makers and you make what inspires you uh, to enjoy the creative process. But I love the details and that's what it's all about. They, uh, they're they really kind of pushed to, to create things that they would want to use. It's how you as a maker would use ideology. That's what all these makes are about, right? So somebody might might think of a story like Tammy, where she wants to create that story. Others might just take and say, I see more of a dreamland for uh, for this Halloween. That's the beauty of, of being a maker and being comfortable with who you are and what you have to offer. So I love the detail though of these spider webs from etc. It really transforms that frame into something totally different. And then of course the chain detail to hang, that is, that's beautiful. And Emma's work, you know, always about like wrinkling the paper and stitching. And that's what kind of adds a little bit of that that distress creep to uh, to something for Halloween. Just beautiful, so much detail. All right. Next up, gosh, there's just there's so many things. Next up is this is an etc. tag that Stacy created. I love seeing that glitter in the background, man. When you see that Halloween glitter, man, it just really pops on there, doesn't it? I love seeing that. It's through a stencil, so it's got a beautiful pattern, that damask pattern back there. Curious things. You can see how that's just highlighted up there. That 
that cool kind of eroded bit of that paper. That's what we love about that, that craft paper. Look at all the different layers here. You can see little hints of, I mean, there's stuff everywhere. Mummy cloth. Take a look at the test tube though. Look at that. The butterfly in there, little curator. Look at the little mushroom. I'm seeing these for the first time, guys. So I'm noticing these little details. I had no idea that that mushroom fit in there, but man, am I glad it did. I would like to say that we designed it that way. I can say that, but we didn't, but it's cool. And now look at this. So just this make, look at the three different ideas for the test tube. So that's what I'm saying when you're watching these lives. Compartmentalize your ideas, have that little notepad and go, ooh, cool, toadstool in test tube or the other way around with the bones and the skull sitting at the top and then the bone tied around there. So there's bones in there, bone tied around there. I love the paper dolls. Oh, I love that he found someone, see? He found someone that would appreciate him and his cat. There she is. But look at all the cool layers. Oh, Undertaker and Embalmer. There you go. Oh my gosh. See, they just tell a story. There are the flowers, right? The bouquet. They start out white, but the fact that you can ink them and glitter them and sparkle them and just add little nuggets of stuff. Stacy always puts little bits of like, you know, real moss and, and things in the makes to give it definitely more of a natural look. And there are those trims. And again, using that, the new Sizzix die that cuts papers to fit those trims. Very cool. What a great tag. Cool stuff, right, Mario? Very cool. Very cool. All right, this one, oh my gosh. Seriously, the Crackle Queen. Zoe created this. Zoe Hillman Crackle Magic. Jeez Louise, man. Holy, look at that. That, talk about getting your crack on. Look at that. Wow. Sorry. That's, I mean, geez, like, that's so cool. I mean, it's crackled all the way around, even on the inside. I only saw the top. Wow. All right. So Zoe created this. This is the coffin vignette. That was just the brown. That was just that. Very cool. So I can I see some paste. Some looks like it looks like some texture paste in there. But yeah, that crackle. It's really just about how it's worn away. All right, I'll stop gushing. But very very cool. I love the fact that um we've got that ledge in there. There's our little cage with some mummy cloth. There's some yummy yummy grip paste in there they're the drippy candles there we're talking about those gothic frames right with the portraits look at this cool library built again with those trims and look at all these little books right so these books these are stitched so you can stitch them you can glue them there's many ways that you can make these little books i love the little rusty look at that little rusty lock up in there the skulls oh see there are those little tiny vials remember when i said those tiny cork vials with the string and look at that little that little spider right there. Look at that green, just glows. Very cool. There's our wonderful broom handle. See how it, it works? And then you see what I was saying? Like if you wet this, you can just get this so just kind of gnarly with crayons and paints. There's our cauldron. Love having some of that paste on there. See, that's the beauty of that new, uh, that new grip paste for Halloween. But of course these light up. So let's light this, let's light this thing up. Ooh, there she is in the attic, warm and creepy. And I'm sure we're going to have a light up. Oh, look at that bubbling cauldron, right? Very cool. So the fun thing, of course, about seasonal tiny lights, and you saw even from Tammy's make, right? Having the green, the purple, the different colors, or if you have some from last year, because we did orange, you could still use uh, the, the clear ones that we have every day, but it does provide a, a nice warm glow, but just really, really cool uh, way to add uh, just an, an awesome detail element to the makes and the bubbles you guys you are never going to have enough bubbles i'm telling you right now and the makers will say the same thing so your bubbles can stay clear or you can ink them you can do a lot of different things with with the bubbles and that's what i was going to now that i've shared this i'll talk about that um, so the thing to remember about the bubbles they could be alcohol inked how you light them up so this is just drilled in just drilled into the bottom to put some tiny lights in there how you light them up wherever the tiny lights are that's what's going to uh, make these glow. So for example, on Zoe, she has the clear bubbles. So it looks, and she's got like the green kind of oozing out of it. Of course, when this lights up, it's gonna light up the green from the top. If you want them to be a deeper green, then starting with alcohol inked bubbles, you see how it just changes the color, right? Because you're lighting up something that's a little different. If you want light to come out of the front of this. So we even drilled a hole in the front of the cauldron as well. And then we just, there now you can see the, the light in there. You just drill a hole. So that's the fun about tiny lights is just a, a small little hole allows you to kind of maneuver and weave these out however you want. But you as the maker get to change and transform 
uh, your makes into however you want. I love this coffin. Did that crackle? I can't even get enough of it. Seriously. Wow. Love the tray. I love these books. See, look at all the details. The thing about having those ephemera books and a little curator, it really does add a whole nother element. And hopefully uh, you'll see that it makes it so much easier to create those books. Just beautiful. Yeah. Those lighted bubbles. Oh, yum. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Th this probably, gosh, this might be the limit. Who knows? We might hit five hours, right? No. That'd be awesome. Wouldn't it be? Yeah. All right. Because I'm only on, listen, I'm on, I'm on like bucket one and we have, I think, four to go through. So Jan created this one. Take a look at this vignette um, divided drawer. It is a, a tall curio. And I'm going to say that because it's designed to stand up. So you can see at the bottom, she used a little skull, four feet of this. So it is designed to stand up. Okay. Now, some details that I want to talk about here, you can see there's that bat trim that I was talking about. I love the tipped over poison, little apothecary, the skull, but the front cover alone, we've got the ideology hinges and then we have the gates. Now take a look at these gates. This is what's, what's wild. And uh, Jan sent me a little note. She's like, okay, this can open, this can open, but she, I'm glad she did because she called out things that I would have never caught before. All right. So these can actually hinge open. Okay. Right. So there's a little, a little chain and a little key, and I can take this little lobster claw with my pork chop fingers, unlatch it, and these will open up. Okay. So the ornate gates open up on this hole that she cut out on the cover because there is a cover that she made this probably just out of chipboard that is layered on here. But are you ready for this detail? Okay. Take a look at what she used to hold on the gate. These are the ideology game spinners four of them. Shut up. She used the hole in the spinner to put the gate through and then just bent this down. And that is what it, that's, what's allowing the gate itself to actually see that pivot and, and swing through the hole because the, the little rod of the gate, the metal rod goes right into that. And then she just embedded the other end and probably bent it up and then covered it with paper, but how clever to use. And then just seeing those little arrows, it just matches the finials on there, but there's some, all that cool grip paste. You guys, this, the stuff that we did for Ranger for Halloween, seeing all that texture and grit, that's why we did it for Halloween. All the makers got all of that Ranger stuff when they were working on their makes so they can incorporate it into their makes, whether it was Sizzix, you saw it on the Stampers cards, and of course in Ideology because you got all of the cool detail. Love the little smear of crackle going down the whole thing. And then of course, the box opens, right? And the box opens to reveal all these other little curios. So you can see these uh, little pharmacy boxes. She used uh, the little paper village dies just to create these little boxes because they were like small houses that she said she just folded in, right? Now there are lights in this as well. I've got to just take it out because they're kind of hidden in the little box. Look at that, Look at the beautiful purple light in there. So you can see the eyeballs in that cracked in there. There's the metal seal. There's our lantern lit up with some purple, the books. I love that you guys use the books. Thank you, makers. So good. I love seeing the candle stand and one of the bubbles. Looks like a little crystal ball, right? Alcohol inked purple. The paper's down there. Look at that. And then on the drippy candle, just taking one of those tiny lights and just sticking it behind there, right? So when it's off, let me just take this little battery pack out. When it's off, it's still gonna, oh, there we go. It's still a drippy candle, right? Because you, you still have the wick on there. You don't even see the light until you turn it on and then it just lights up. And there you can see the test tubes with all that cool grit, some bones in there. Again, more books. I love these curator labels on these folded little boxes with that die. That is brilliant, Jan. And listen, those skull feet, so good, right? Moon face for the layers and just incorporating these elements. What a cool little curio. And then on the inside, there's again, portraits. You can take that from the sticker book. Elmira just isn't that awesome so good the details are in fact everything absolutely cool yeah and the makers they they do all sorts of nice things that, oh hello look at that look at that on the back a little crackety crack on the backdrop that's good man you guys wow okay let me let me turn these off beautiful job Jen I love that I love that little detail I can't even get over the brilliance of that that in itself just to I'm glad she left me a note because I wouldn't have even thought to to even swing these open I was like these are glued down that's what I would have done right that's so cool beautiful all right 
I hand it off to Mario with care, right? With ease. You know it. All right. This next one, this is a tray. Sharon created this. This is a vignette tray. And the, the thing to remember really when it comes to working with stuff, you use what you do. Now, anyone that knows Sharon, she is uh, a wonderful color card maker, clean and simple. And I know that, you know, when we talked about doing ideology, she's like, yeah, I'm totally up for the challenge. And I love the fact that she does ideology her way. It doesn't always have to be about a bazillion little details and all of that. You can still tell a story just from the elements alone. And that's the importance of remembering that as a maker. Take these elements and create something that you like, that you do, that resonates with you. And so seeing the transparencies here, the paper dolls, you see the baseboard, you see the layers. This, of course, even lights up. I got to turn on these tiny lights back here if I can. There you go. Those green lights in there to light up that that cool eye chart. And then down at the bottom, take a look at that. All of those eyes in those different, remember I talked about the cork domes that are part of the everyday line? Yes, very cool. And then you see the little eyeballs and then all the little stickers. It's just a really cool tray. And that's the thing. So the back, you just dry brush paint on there. So not everything has to be crackle and grungy and grit and grime. That to me is what's really important to always, always embrace yourself as that maker to say, this is how I use it. And I love seeing a lot of elements like the tape on the edge and just how wrapped and finished this frame is to, to capture that, that light box in there. And just that he's holding that little detail. That's everything right there. Again, another ledge. That's just the, et cetera, trim, just cool make. So very cool, Sharon. I love it. All right. Now this one, again, this is all for like another thing of notes and Susie, um, Susie created this, Susie Hines, and she has a YouTube channel. She goes through all of her stuff. So really, uh, as much as I would love to spend probably two hours on this on this project, I there's no way I'll be able to do it. But I'm going to talk about some some highlights. So she created a box. This is just a vignette box that has been covered. She's got some of the hinges on there. This is the vignette hardware to just nail in the hinges. So you can use fasteners, glue, or the vignette hardware for the nails. I love seeing that wallpaper scrap in there in this box and just how the box has that cool stitched paper edge before you stick it down. That's the cool thing about having kind of just grimy paper, right? Sometimes people say on the backdrops, why is it grimy? Because you can stitch through it, but then when you stick it onto something, you're like, wait a minute, is that done on the wood? No, that's just the paper. But then inside, we're talking books. Now, Susie and Marlisa are two of our uh, bookmakers. They both created some beautiful journals. And again, there's so many different hidden things that I'll never be able to get through during a live. So I really encourage you to check it out. But there's so many wonderful little details from uh, little tags and pockets that you can pull things out with the seals. This book, absolutely charming. Just to kind of unravel this, you can see that the cover of this is that baseboard frame with the cutout, that little bit of mica in there, the paper dolls. And this is, she said that it's hinged with like a deconstructed, well, she talks about there's a lot of different things. This is like taking the deconstructed fabric journal from ideology. That's kind of its foundation back there, the pages, but then cut up to create this book. Now you can see in here, there's all sorts of fun and creepy things like taking the paper doll, removing her head and putting it over uh, that piece that's in the backdrop. So there's a transparent wings. I love seeing those little boys behind the baseboard window up to mischief and just seeing how she cut out the piece from here to layer here. Look at his clothes, how it's cut out. Like there's so many cool details that you can just go on and on and on in all of these books. I think that really the, the style and attention to detail is just impeccable from the stitching to the tiny attacher to just seeing those layered pieces. Absolutely. I just, and I love seeing the portraits and the paper dolls. Look at that. How cool is that? Using that layer, that was that postcard layer. And then this, this is another thing about baseboards because they're printed, you can peel off the top layer. So that is from the layers, but I'm sorry, the baseboards, but she got rid of the chipboard because you can peel off that top layer of the baseboard and just use the printed area. But see how it's got just a little bit of the transparency in there, the little spider web, little tag, little bone. So that just kind of flips up. Look at that face. I mean, see, it's just like hide and seek. It's like creative hide and seek in her books. Just everywhere you look, there's going to be something unique. And I love the tattered wallpaper, the little porthole right there. And this, you've seen a sneak peek of this. I thought that was brilliant when I saw the sneak peek. I'm like, what? 
So those must be the portraits from the sticker book and how she used the skull over that guy with the top hat. And then put all of those behind the window frame. But look at all those little curled edges of the wallpaper. Just fantastic, right? So, so cool. Love it, love it, love it. And then just wrapped around with fabric. So much detail. And look at the little grit and grunge and grime in that. Mm, mm, mm. And look at the little mica, right? See, that's that distressed mica, the little black mica flakes. I love that little sparkle. See, I didn't even notice it at first. And then when the light hits it, that is the beauty of those little mica flakes, just adding that little, little touch of shimmer. Just beautiful, beautiful. Every little detail. So yes, I encourage you to watch. She does a, an amazing walkthrough of every single thing, page by page by page. Uh, both her and Marlies do. Cool. Oh, we got the bucket. One down. One down. One down. Four to go. Three to go. Oh, we're, oh yeah. This is going to be. This is probably going to go down the books as a marathon one. All right. This one. I just have to say that this brings me pure and utter joy because this is. This is like me in, in a dome. Zoe created this. It is a display dome. It does light up with tiny lights, but this is me. Why? Look at the candy corn tree, right? So that's a little woodland tree that she inked with candy corn. The candy and the bones coming out of the jack-o'-lantern and just in the back, how all those little pieces, can you guys see how they're all little, they're chopped up? But take a look at what she did. She went in and alcohol inked that candy, right? Because remember, it's just black and white, but to go in with alcohol ink and actually tint it and just give them a whole other color. I love the addition of orange. This just makes me, I don't know, pumpkin, pumpkin. I've been thinking so good. Yeah, pure, pure happiness. And I love just how tattered and like warm with the little wire showing of that tree and the bones and the candy and that jack-o'-lantern. That's just, that's childhood nostalgia right there just to sit and look at that. I love the display domes. And yeah, with the tiny lights, you, you have the ability to, to kind of carve through uh, that cork and create a little notch out of the back. And you can have this set somewhere. It's just really, really cool. Just think it's really, really, really good. So absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Just to see all those, all those details, all those elements. It's all in the details, right? All right. Beautiful, Zoe. Jar. I love it. Huh? You in Me in jar. a jar. It is. Okay. All right, next up, oh boy, I hope Paula is still here because Paula has a, I mean, there's a story behind this, a story, honestly, guys, I did not know. Um, and Paula created this and it was all a story that she needed to, to tell me about. And I'm, I'm glad I was, I, I'm glad I was told a little bit, but I don't know if I'm even going to get it right. So here we go. This is a beautiful make that Paula created. I love just the foundation. It's just a, a vintage a vintage cover that she has but on the back you can see the backdrop of that really cool old card right and then you can see i'm um, just i'm seeing if anyone gets in the chat before i say it but that's all right um so here you can see there are the baseboard window frames with the mica in there and i love how she kind of has those propped open then there is another frame in the background that that houses these as a foundation there you can see that etc Ah, there we go. Someone just started to guess it. Someone guessed it. Anyone? No. There you go. I'm, I'm reading the chat, guys, so I'm like super distracted when I, I see this. All right. So if, if I recall, and please, I hope Paul is still here to kind of correct me if I'm wrong. All right. It's not Annie. <laughs> it, oh, see? It is not Annie. Okay. So it is Miss Havisham from Great Expectations. They're, they're joking because I, I got her confused with Miss Hannigan from Annie. So don't don't judge me. I'm like, oh, I know that story, but I didn't know she had a backstory. I thought she was just mean in the orphanage. Wrong story. So Miss Havisham, this is from Great Expectations, right? Dickens, but it's the whole story that she was uh, left at the on her before her wedding. She was a jilted bride, and then she like lived in this mansion and let everything around her be deteriorated, and she never got out of her wedding dress. She wore her wedding dress. Uh, all the clocks in the mansion stopped at. 20 minutes to nine when she read the letter that um, she was left. I love the detail of this cake I that Paula created. <laughs> well, Paula didn't tell me about the shoe, but I did some Googling and I read Paula that she even went on to only wear one shoe that she had only put on one shoe when she read the letter. And so even though she went out of her wedding dress, she also walked around with only one shoe, which no kidding. That he was, didn't read it this morning. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was to me, like, what are you reading? 
I said, I have to do my homework. I have to know this story and see, then I crack under pressure. But take a look at how cool uh, the candle stand is for the cake. I mean, that detail of that little cake and the crown and that new paper doll, I think that was the whole inspiration right there. I mean, look at that. Well, look yes, at that. She didn't have a shoe. <laughs> Yeah, no, she didn't. But see, I didn't even know that part of the story, but I thought, man, that really was. She was completely distraught. I just think the details of this, the story, absolutely spectacular. And that's what I was saying, that when you go to make something, and Paul and I talked about this, you know, you see these components and something pops into your head, right? And if that's a story, tell the story. If it's just this creative fun and party you're having, have that party, right? Not everything has to be attached to a story, but there are certainly elements where you can create that story. And whether that is that is a story that you've read or that's a story you want to tell, that's the thing about being a maker is that you can take those elements and you do you. You explore that. And I just love every little detail from even those spider webs, which I said to Paul, I'm like, those webs are epic right there. Uh, you can see a little hint of the mummy cloth. But honestly, guys, the cake, there's just so many details. And these makes are huge, so I'm trying to stay in frame, but I can't because if I if I keep them on the table, you really can't appreciate uh, all the detail from even like that mica, how it's fractured behind those windows. It's just so cool. And that candle stand, I just can't even get over it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I absolutely love it. Yeah, and I love just that the hanging thing, and then you can see the top. She is the tag, the condemned, right? With that little loop pin because of course her mansion condemned. I got it. It was a great story. I mean, I only read that part about her, but still incredibly cool. The cake. Yeah. So I'm sure Paul is going to share way more details on all the little tricks of that because it is all about the details. That's what it should be, right? Uh, this next one, Tammy B created this shrine. I love the shrine. This again has another story. And this story, I know that, um, Tammy said she's going to share. This is just a, a grief inspired story about the backdrop and all of these different uh, elements about the signs. And she said she is going to share uh, more of an in-depth about all of the different meanings that she put into this make. It is hauntingly beautiful. I will say that using a vignette shrine and using the papers. I love seeing that remembrance card in there, a beautiful, beautiful paper doll. You can see in there just the words from clippings, and then it's what I was talking about. See the urn, how it's just transformed just by adding some paint. There is the ideology bouquet. And of course, pair it with any of your favorite Sizzix dyes. You can give it a whole different look and feel. The drippy candles, love the drippy candles with the candle stand. And again, seeing the flowers and just the dyes coming out of there. And then the new Gothic frame. Love that little bit of black paint, but just such a beautiful make. It is. It is haunting. It's hauntingly beautiful, though, because I think it, it does just have so many uh, wonderful elements. But it's just it, it's inspired by, you know, she just talks about just a whole memorial card and the backdrop about grief. So it is. And the, the morning custom. So definitely check it out because she's going to share all of her details on it. Such a beautiful. I love seeing that people can also find creativity uh, therapeutic in a totally different way. Yeah. I, for me it's the palette, right? I look at that and I'm like, wow, this is just so cool that it's just, I love just seeing all of the, the black and white, very monochromatic in the back, which is just a little hint of color in there. Stunning, stunning, stunning. All right. Okay. I've just, I gotta just keep grabbing, right? Like, I don't know what else to do other than just to grab the next make. At this point, it's kind of like, it's a free for all. I have to just do whatever I can do. So this one, Sharon created this one, a cool coffin vignette. I love just seeing that black stain painted on there. Again, seeing the urn completely transform. It's always interesting how a lot of makers channel very similar ideas, uh, utilizing the clock and the wings. There's the drippy candles housed in that mummy cloth. I love seeing that quote seal in the back. Again, don't hesitate to add that color in the back. That is everything, right? Little skull. And look at him. How cool is he with those wings, you guys? You see what I mean? And then there's the cage. And look at how she has the cage just kind of bent and broken. Like he's just out of the cage so he can spread his wings. Dreadfully wicked. Yeah, I love it. Just before midnight. So very cool uh, coffin vignette. Just again, telling a story. Just seeing all the different ideas. And that's the thing to remember. Really important to jot down notes and say, yeah, wings on paper doll. Cool. Bent cage. You know, all those things that kind of trigger. Paint urn black. Dye flowers. Those are the things that I think you'll remember what you found intriguing or, or interesting throughout the live, those ideas that you want to come back and revisit when you start doing doing the makes. So 
Absolutely love that. Great, Sharon. Very cool. All right. Next, we're going to do another book. So this is from Marlise. She's a, a new maker for ideology. She has a great way of using uh, ephemera and papers, a completely different style from, from Susie. And just the, the layers that she does, again, there were, there were pages of notes that she left me. I'm like, oh, yes, that is not, that would require me reading and thinking. And I'm just telling you right now, I don't do that. <laughs> I like to just wing it and see what I get. So again, I know that Marlise goes through and talks about her makes in detail as well. I believe she does it on YouTube. So you definitely want to check out a walkthrough of this. But I love looking at the foundations of this because if you look at the actual paper foundation, all of these little layers and bits, these are all ephemera, snippets, things that are layered on a backdrop to create a background paper. So just this piece alone, right? That's a layer, that one, that one, that one, that, 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 and that, all layered on this before it even has this wonderful window cut out of it. I love the idea of layering both of these transparent wings from the bat as well as the butterfly and then that spider in the middle. You can see it's got some mummy cloth that has been dyed purple and of course that lock on there. But as we open this up, right, you can see that it just, it transforms into just this, I don't know, this like mini book menagerie of just fun. Stuff is just wrapped around. I love seeing that, that new plaque just right on that spine of the book right, with the bone collector. And that just kind of sets the stage for the story. Everything that she has here, again, it's all about layers. It's about looking at one thing and realizing how many little pieces were added to build up to what this is, right? And then everything on here, there are just things that just come out, all little tags that pull out and you can flip over and there's little remnant rubs and, and stickers and stories and so many cool elements. That to me is, is always my favorite detail about makes, especially people that do mini books and junk journals. It's all the thoughts that go into layers that sometimes you might have to go through something three or four times to experience all of it. I mean, look when this book is open, right? Look at all the details, just one thing after the next, because this is an entire cascade, an entire waterfall of all sorts of different elements that can pull out from the flashcards. There's little stitch cards behind and every little thing just has all this little detail where you can see everything cut and stitched together. That is, that's the magic. That's the magic of the, the bookmaker. I'm certainly not that person at all. Mario, are you that person? Yeah, no, not. Mario's not that person. Yeah. And, and I probably didn't even put it in right. I'll put this in at the end, right? I'm going to tuck this, tuck this in, but I love seeing again, how, when, when people do a lot of paper layering, and that's really one of uh, her specialties is, is the ability to leave things in the foreground. And then when you layer something in the background, that just becomes part of the whole element of what you're seeing, right? Even down to that little flashcard of, of Wicked, right? Having that tucked in, you already just kind of uh, take your perception of that little girl. Then as we go through, that's the other side of that open window on the cover. I think that's also really cool to see uh, those wings make an appearance on both sides, right? The inside and the outside. And just having these pieces, it's almost like a thermometer, but it's just the calendar that sticks up. And then all of these pieces that come out. So like in this little area, again, there's another tag that can come out. All of these different paper layers, right? Everything that's either stitched or used, uh, tiny attacher on, little clips that are in here. I mean, there's it's one thing after the next. Every, every little element that you have, there's just all these things to come out and be revealed to remove a clip. So un freaking believable, right? Look at this little pocket. I don't know if this is probably supposed to come out. She's probably screaming going, don't pull that out of my book, Tim. I don't know, Marlise, it's supposed to come out. Oh yeah, it is. Here, let me take that. <laughs> She's going to be like, note to self, don't ever let Tim take that stuff. Look at that. I love just having, it's just hidden back there. And then it's all attached with that little tiny clip. And then this little thing flips open and then, oh, see, now I get it. So many cool details. This is yeah, this is one of those things that if you give me a book, I'll probably, I'm a good book deconstructor because I'm, I'm the curiosity person. I want to check it out. Like, look at this. This is just saying, here, open me. Okay, gladly. Look at that. Whew, very cool. And in here, oh, look at this card, right? All those details. I love seeing that label tape, one of my favorites. Uh, and just the wrapped little portraits, little poison, details, cards. 
that's the thing. So I think it's really, it's great to see these styles of makes and these different ideas, because if you're not a dimensional maker, if you're not into the vignette boxes and the trays and all of that, it is about saying, okay, I just like to work with paper. Great. What can I build? Well, does it have to be a foundational journal? No, you could start with a foundation. That's great. But you can also just start taking paper. And if you have that engineering and the ability to just start building and tucking and adding layers, that's the whole idea is just creating all these little reveals and little peaks and pockets. Absolutely cool, stunning chart. Look at that. It's just, yeah, that's what it's all about. And every little thing just has little schmutz of paint and grit and color. And there's so much texture in here that um, I know when you watch the videos from the actual makers, especially of these journals, there's so many details that they put into every single element that goes into the book. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, photo on the back, Tim, of the collage, Tim. No idea. Do you have any idea what that means? I didn't know what you meant. Photo on the back of the collage, Tim. She wants me to maybe look at the back of this. Oh, there you go. All right. I'm guessing that's her. Is something the matter? It's a cute little photo. Charming in the little costume. Maybe that's Marlies. Is that you? It's very cute. Love the little details because that's that's what it is. I hope that's what she was talking about. No idea. Know. Yeah. Never really know. There we go. All right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Next up, let's take let's take this one. All right. Oh, it's her son. Oh, it's her son. Absolutely cute. Beautiful. I pr it's probably somewhere in, in the notes, but now she'll know like to, I don't I don't read the notes. notes. I don't do good with notes. I wish I did, but I just I just don't. But, I, mean, I, hey, I, I like to wing it. I like to do live. You Listen, I I like to do this. All right, so this one this one has light, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna light this up. There we go. Emma created this. So this is using a vignette. Oh, there goes a little lock. Love seeing how incorporating boxes, right? That's a whole idea. Taking vignette boxes and building structures with that. You can see the baseboard frame that went over the top, that window frame. I love seeing just all these little extra details, right? Little curious things. And that's the thing, whether you're a vignette maker, like again, I'll show this with, with Emma, or you go back to Marlise's book or Susie's, all those little details, that is the mind of the maker. That is saying that these are the little details, these are the elements that are important to me and I want to include them in there. And that's why it is so important that you go and visit their blogs and social to see all of these things and maybe learn the story behind what they are, you know, the significance of a photo or uh, why, why a certain element was added or layered in a way. I love this story uh, though, just of kind of like the library. Paula talked about like the gate kind of looked like a spiral staircase going up to a library where we had all those books in there. You guys see all those books? And then you see the little tiny vials, the candles, the paper dolls, and there is that lantern. And yes, the lantern does have tiny lights. There you go in the back, just lit up. But how cool is that at night? Cause I'm sure it just casts such a beautiful glow going up the wall, but what a cool thing it is. Curious things. It is almost like a library. And I see that now Paula, where she's like, it looks like a spiral staircase going up. Absolutely beautiful. Emma, look at the details in that, right? Little bones tucked behind there. You see a lot of mummy cloth. Right, mummy cloth, it just kind of is that great filler and that texture. I love it. Very cool. I always got to remember to turn off the tiny lights. But yeah, that it does. It's kind of like a haunted library. I love seeing that window at the top too. I don't know what this stuff is, but I dig it. Emma's used it quite a bit. I don't know. It's some sort of weird little, little crazy straw. I love that. I don't know what it is. Maybe she, if Emma's still in here, maybe she can say what it is. I don't know. But it's cool. Look at that little key. Yeah, I love that straw stuff. See, it's like sticking out everywhere. Hmm. I don't know what it is. All right. Next up, we'll do something a little on the sweet side. Shall we? Shall we, Tammy? <laughs> Tammy, you know that Tammy and I love Disney. Love, love Disney. So, yeah, this is really inspired by the candy shop, like on Main Street, just seeing all the, di the different candies, just all the different windows and vignettes. So Tammy created this using a vignette, the divided drawer, because again, you can take out those little components and those little elements, right? So the other thing to remember when you're working with uh, pieces is that you can create a different scene in each vignette, okay? And that's what this is all about. So let me just kind of pick this up. Uh, let's see. Okay, I've got to, I should have made sure that 
it's supposed to be hanging up. So I, I need to like fix see there's a little apple in there. <laughs> I want to, I'm turning on the tiny light. Tammy always has them in these little pockets and my, my fingers can't get in there. There we go. All right. So there we can see the cauldron lit. So let's just kind of go through the little windows. So the curious things, there's that distress glitter with the bat. Love seeing the jack-o'-lantern, but look at these little wrapped candies. Seriously, the little wrapped cellophane? Tammy, how long did you, did it take to wrap those? So here, these are the confections. These and these guys are confections. These, I believe, are the bubbles. Let me see if she said that in the note. Yes. Uh, top is a candy store window. Bubbles colored with alcohol ink. Yep. There you go. Alcohol ink and then I'm sure a little rock candy glitter. I'm sure she says that in the notes, but I would, I would have to read them. Uh, but I love, I can just kind of tell from the striped wallpaper. I love it. There's that little spider web in there. It's total Main Street. But look at this. I'm going to try to hold this up. So she's got, there we go. Oh, it rolled perfect. Look at the little poison apple in there and the cauldron. I love the poison apple. It is so cool. Now the little glitter. There's a little bubbling cauldron that comes out. The poison apple, does she say? Oh, it's a tiny pumpkin. There you go. A tiny pumpkin painted red. And then I love the little backdrop. You see the little overhang where everything is kind of lit with those tiny lights. How, see how the tiny lights glow up as like an up light and then go down. And that's still all done with one strand of tiny light. So it's really how you navigate the lights uh, through your make when you're creating it. But there's the drippy candles. I love that she added the bonus drips to the stands, right? Because if you're still making drippy candles, that's a whole other thing to do. You can start with the resin ones and then just add your bonus drips with your hot glue and paint and just add, it gives it even more charm and personality. There's a little pumpkins from that resin pumpkin set. They are designed to stack as a little tier right in that urn. I love seeing the little book and having that, the whole little masquerade with that glitter. That glitter is a cool detail, right? And look at this. Oh my gosh. This I think is a 3D Impresslet star trim. This is a classic. That is so good on there. Very cool. Love the details of that. Love that sweet shop. And then the outside, that's just using the backdrop paper. So that crackle effect is just from the paper. Mm -mm -mm. All in the details. Yep, look at that little mirror in the back. So good, right? Everything goes from like creepy to sweet to cute to, to a little bit of everything. All right, so speaking of creepy to sweet to cute to creepy, this one... This is wild. That's all I can say. This is wild. Vicky created this. Um, this is a, a vignette. So this starts out as a vignette tray. The, the texture that's on here, right? All of the crackle in layers, it's, I don't know, it's like it's done over different pieces of cardstock or paper or tape to give it some sort of kind of cool uh, brick work. It's got this really grunged up condemned tag. Now, there, there is a story or there was a story of course, I don't know where the story went. All right. This is all I can tell you that from what I remember, because <laughs> they had stories. I can't keep all the stories straight. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, so we've got this, the tray here. We have the machine heads, right? Ideology. This is what I was saying about the gauge frames and how those circles will fit inside there. So it really adds uh, a whole cool effect. I love seeing the skulls on there. Vicky's all about texture and grunge and grit and grime, making things look so authentic and real. I love seeing the stencil card in there. So this is kind of all about a little x-ray thing. And this is why I was saying I kind of got confused because on the back, she's got different things marked, right? What is marked with what? So I'm going to start with, I think the x-ray, right? So when you light this up, she's created this x-ray using, uh, these are old school. These are index clips and these are the transparencies. So she went in and kind of burned out some holes, right? Using like a wood burning tool. You can go in and you can burn out holes through the transparency just to create that grime. You definitely want to do this outside because you're melting plastic, right? But then if you look at the background, you can see how it's all lit up through that, through the stencil. And then this hangs up there like an X-ray, right? So when this is put into the clips, it can hang there like a creepy X-ray. There we go. I'll tilt it just so you can kind of see how the light goes. So a very cool kind of, kind of transformation, right? I love the whole X-ray. But then the other part of it, the other lights, and, and I think you can probably put, put both of them on or you can turn one off and turn the other one on. But then she also included another transparency to like switch out, right? So there's kind of our creepy guy in there. And then you can light up the tubes. So she has two different sets of tiny lights, one clear, one green, and the green, she lit up those test tubes in there. 
like what a wicked cool transformation. And if you see in there, there's the remnant rubs, all the little string, little metal in there. But I love those test tubes, again, standing upright, just to kind of create almost like fuse tubes. So I'll take this out again, just so you can see from the inside, right? There's just, there's the green lit tubes, and then we have the backlit x-ray. So they could be together or separate. But that's the other thing to keep in mind when you're working with uh, tiny lights and all of these elements, is you get to also control kind of the whole mood or look of that. But look at all the detail. Mm, mm, mm. I love this effect. These little layered bits of paper as well. Definitely uh, a whole different finish, right? And like very molten kind of embossed glazed frames. But I don't think it's cool to have dials in there now. Yeah, wicked cool. Yeah, wicked cool. Love it, love it. So yeah, these right here, these are the stencil cards. This thing in the back, it looks like metal, but this is actually just paper. But using oxides, you can totally make it look like metal. These stencil cards are part of uh, the ideology line, but they do look like metal in here. Wow, amazing, right? Amazing. Keep on going. You guys hang in there with me. Hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. I do feel like a five-year-old, I got to admit, because I just, I love all these makes. So this next one, Emma created this. Again, another vignette, a whole nother story. I like the fact of seeing the portrait, right? We have those frames. These are part of, uh, I think these are maybe curio frames. They're like a metallic chipboard. Very cool. I love seeing entomology in there, the little hardware, little grip. But this part was super interesting to me, like this piece of, it's like this strip of wood in the back and then seeing the finials from the side, it is from regions beyond. It's, it's just like seeing like a mantle of, you know, I don't know, some baron or some crazy looking inventor in there. And there are the test tubes. Look at the collection in there. There's creepy eyes in there, right? A little curator stuff, the bones. And I think what makes all this so kind of grungy and grimy is always just alcohol ink and crayons, seeing different bits of string tied around. But all of these little labels, really, that whole curator set, that, I don't know, that's like the creative glue that connects it. But even down to the detail of like just hammering in some nails and just doing some string for no reason other than creative reason. Look at that cool uh, wallpaper strip made in England. Nice touch, Emma, right? Using that worn wallpaper, some of the foundry tags, the skulls, and then a lot of little moss elements as well. Just very cool tray. And I like the, the little hardware because, you know, having something back here just as that little foundation, it just allows it to be a display that's on a mantle or any of that. And there's a little lock. Those lock and keys, I'm telling you, gosh, they're very cool. Very cool little detail to add. But it, it, again, it's just all about that ripply paper. So take those ideas, even if you see like that finish or, oh, I got to remember on the glass to, to do alcohol ink or to do paint. Just remember to do that. That's, that's what you need to do. You need to remember that. All right. This next one, Paula created this one. This one doesn't have a story, so that's good. So here we have Oh, again, crackle goodness. Look at that on, on the vignette shrine. Look at those bits of crackle. I love seeing the window. So the window, of course, has that transparency. And just look how it, it's lit up. Just kind of like a, a starry night with those purple tiny lights. But just the beautiful details that Paula adds by adding that little lace trim to the paper doll. Or how she's got that spider, but then she adds the thread and puts it in her hand. Like she just has a little pet spider. Or that she's holding on to you know, that little bit of curator. I love seeing that layer of the rose, the wonderful drippy candles. And again, those stands, they're metal. Alter them, alter them with paint or crayons. Look at these little pumpkins that, you know, even though they're that bright orange resin, if you don't like that orange resin, go in there with some twigs and some moss. Alter those, a little bit of paint. There's some mummy cloth, just kind of shred it up. And then Amelia Hardley proprietor. Very cool. Love, I just always love the detail of that. And I think there, there is something very mysterious and magical about uh, using tiny lights, but even seeing from the different makes, right? So the first make, Paula had that, that card, and then she had that, the other story uh, of, what was it, Miss Havisham, I think I remember that, and then creating this. Every idea is valuable. Every idea is worth pursuing. You just have to do it. You have to just make. Make for the sake of making. It's, it's really that simple. Make for the sake of making. Make because we're all here together because as makers, it brings us joy to make. 
And not everything has to be, you know, a, a, a two month make. Sometimes it can be, right? It's, there's no difference. So you can decide how you want to kind of uh, divvy up those ideas and, and create those layers. I think it's very cool. Love okay. to see all that. There's a lot Am I doing of talk okay? and chatter about the mica sheets. So mica is just, you can find it online. Um, it, they're just called mica tiles and you can find them different places. You might be able to find them. I'm not sure if Simon or scrapbook.com uh, has it, but, uh, or Stanford's Anonymous might have it, but they're just called mica tiles and it's a mineral. You have to peel it apart and, and it's been in the art industry for a bazillion years. Yeah. So that's where you need to find it. I don't, I don't know of any other like creative company that, that sure. has it, but that's what they are. Mm -hmm. So this next vignette, Zoe created this, uh, love the look and feel of this, but first we're going to start talking about texture again. Like, I don't know. I need to know these secrets. Like, I'm telling you, this is like some chunky monkey crackle right here. It is. It's Let's so chunky. I know I feel like ice cream right now, but it's, it's so thick on there. But then take a look at the texture on the lantern, right? It's got this, this cool, rusty look, like very old west to me. I love that with the bone collector and the skull. And yes, of course, it lights up. So what a wicked cool lantern. And then we have the gates in there. I love how just the candles are kind of backlit in that corner and we have the headstone and that skull, but even look at the texture of those gates so and inside. It's your pace, Tim. Yeah, I know that. I know it's my pace, but there is a technique to achieve this look, this look, these little bits. There is either, there's some base coating and some rubbing off going on somewhere because this is, yeah, it's cool. I got to learn the tricks of the trade, Zoe. I really do. That's so cool, right? Just because, I mean, I love all the crackle finishes. I love when it's really fine, like the way uh, Vicky had it on that one box. I kept saying it was so smooth or how Paula just kind of smears to where it fades. And then I also appreciate uh, a good, a good chunky crackly. So yeah, it's cool. But look at, I mean, I love the, the lights. And again, when you see that tiny lights and I, I mean, I, I'm sorry to show like the behind the curtain Zoe, but it is important for makers to remember like the tiny light it allows you to kind of navigate where you want it. So you can go up here and it doesn't, you don't have to do, use the end in the lantern, right? You can go up there and you can add some and you can come back down, right? Or you can end it there. Maybe you want to start down in the corner, but you get to kind of uh, poke holes and put where you want the lights to go because there's quite a bit on that strand and then cover it up and then everything can be controlled by one switch. Or if you wanted to figure out just different places to put different color lights, you can do that as well. But I absolutely love this. I love the look of it. I just think that lantern texture is just really good. It, it is. It's all about. It's all about everyone just kind of creating that that whole that whole look, that whole groove to them. All right. So this tray, I'm going to turn the tiny lights on as well. Jan created this. This is a vignette tray. I love the story of this with that layers, the paper doll with all those glittery stars and the bat wings very cool just she dry brushed this pumpkin so see how the pumpkin is not that stark orange because that subtle orange just matches the whole palette there again you see that spider web it's so it's so crazy how many makers use that etc piece so much that that's why i wanted to to kind of call it out but incorporating things like your dies right if you have your favorite die cuts that you want to cut out those stars so you can backlight those i think that's beautiful i think that layer as i mentioned a lot of the paper dolls can just sit on that moon and then just having the candy pieces but again, this is about telling that story, even if this is just kind of about some sort of uh, fantasy or, or nighttime dream or dreaming of candy. But the, the technique of just altering things to fit and tell your story, that's what it's all about. Very, very beautiful, Jen. I love that. I love seeing all just the different, yeah, the different takes. I mean, how many trays have you guys seen so far? Some are crackled, some are covered in, in paper, some have wallpaper, just some are, are sparkly. That's the beauty of this entire release. And that's what I hope that you are uh, continue to be inspired by. I hope you're not bored yet because we still have, no we have so much to go through, but it's because everybody's, I don't know, everyone's idea to me is important. Everyone's way of how they use stuff is important. So Sharon created this divided vignette. Again, very cool to have all these different story compartments. So if you look up here, we've got just, I, I kind of look at this as like the study with the little wallpaper, the drippy candles and the skull. I love all the colorful kind of liquid in there and look at all that stuff kind of bubbling out of the cauldron, right? There's some bats in there and the bone and poison. Then she's got the found objects in there and then you kind of come down to this compartment. 
and you see the broom going across that little wrapped test tube. Looks like, I don't know what it had. It looks like it might have some mica in there as well. The candy, love how she's colored the candy sticks of that. The little game wheel. And then when you kind of come down here, again, there's that, that snow globe from Christmas. But see, it's got, oh, I love that. Looks like some crackle in there. Just, I don't know, it's bubbly in there. So if that's crackle, it didn't crack, but I love the bubbly look of it. I don't know, maybe it's glossy accents. The little urn with the flowers. And again, this liquid, just kind of having those different colored resins that you go in the bottles, just beautiful. And then the orange bubbles that come out of the cauldron and the lock. But see, the use of all the different papers and all the different elements, yeah, you don't have to have stuff hanging out or not everything has to be lit up. Everything has a place and a story and a purpose for you to tell as a maker. Look at that. I love the detail of the backdrops too and how the backdrops just change from different compartments. I think that's what also helps tell the story. Just really cool to see that wallpaper in there that sets apart each little element. Cool. I love the Chiron. I love these colored things. I saw that even in your sneak peek because, you know, they're not liquid. Obviously, they're not moving. So it's, it's clearly solidified. It must be some sort of colored resin. But man, that's cool. I'm going to do more of that, right? That sludge in there. <laughs> That's so good. All right. Next up, let's see. What do I want to grab on this one? I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go here. Let's go. I've got to just pick this up. I have a few things to kind of move around. All right. We're going to do another book. This is a book from Susie's. This book opens completely different. Um, and I like this because this was kind of a challenge to Susie to like make uh, like use more dimensional things within the book. And I found that to be really, really cool. Here is this is so good. Look at that. A cage full of eyeballs. Like who doesn't want that? And I love how the eyeballs are like back to back and kind of trimmed and then glued together. And yeah, I love seeing the creepy eyes just in the cage with the key. So this book curiosities and again you see like the little toadstool just put on there but this book opens differently this is like an accordion book so this is something like for me as as a maker like i can kind of handle the idea of it's almost even like taking like what what paula did in the first make right maybe you're going to make panels but then you can attach them together with uh, strips of fabric or mummy cloth or a deconstructed journal right because we have that that fabric journal but then you can create just a, that cool accordion fold. And the fun part about that, of course, you can do both sides. Um, I'm always a fan of accordions too, because you can display them, you know, just on a table or a ledge for someone to pick up. But just going in again with all the details, right? Seeing this guy, like, I just love the idea of the eye going over his eye, the gauge frame. Again, there's probably all sorts of different reveals and hidden things that I'm, I'm, I'm not going for, but I love the idea. Well, this one, I can tell. Like, I'm, I'm always just worried to just rip something out of someone's book. But there you go. The end, like coming out of his brain. The little stitch details going through the layer. You guys see that? There's a little mica tile in, or a little, a little mica flake in his eye. That was cool. It's like he's winking at me. Oh, a little spider earring. I should use those where that is earrings. Very cool. Susie's name, so Mario names it on the back. She didn't put that. That comes off. But it is important that I know who made what, right? Take a look at the other side of that window frame. And again, using layers and ephemera, baseboards. Again, just including those frames, every little piece could be its own idea. So if you are a bookmaker, junk journal, you could certainly create this accordion fold book. If you're not and you're just looking for an idea to create maybe a card front or maybe a background in a, a vignette, that's where you have to really look at each of these ideas for what they are. That is the magic of the maker, is just those little nuances that they throw in to what they do. Even the little detail of taking uh, that memo pin and putting that through the butterfly and clipping on that little flashcard with the sticker, all of those little details, like every single time you flip through something, you're gonna spot more, something else, like the bullseye behind his head, right? Watching and waiting, it just very, very cool details. I love this. But yeah, I can't get over the eyeballs in the cage. I'm so I'm totally doing that. I really am. I just got to know about like cutting off those eyeballs. Like, did you melt them off, Susie? Did you cut them? Because if you look, they they look to be kind of, oh, maybe she didn't do anything. Oh, I see. They're the small ones. Look at that. Ah, they're just the small ones glued. They look round because they're so shiny, probably from being alcohol inked. But oh, man, that's good. Okay. Next up, 
Let's do this one. This one's really cute. This one um, is very intriguing. So Tammy B created this one, another candy dome. What's cool about it, and I don't, do we have Zoe's here still? Can you grab Zoe? What's always cool, and I say this every time, it never fails that there's gonna be makers that channel each other in a very similar idea. But one thing I will always count on, and I know without fail, that each of those makers, although the idea could be incredibly similar, the look and detail will be completely different, right? Because the makers stay true to their style. They have that comfort level of doing what they do. And that's why I would say a shout out to the makers. So two display domes, Tammy B, Zoe. Zoe, vintage, grunge, Tammy B, colorful, sparkly. But that just shows that you can take an idea and you can make it your own by what it is you like to do, right? So for Tammy's, this was really, cause Mario said it, it lit up and I'm like, but where's the cord? So like, that's some serious carving skills, right? She carved out that cork to, to bury those lights. Yeah, I'm definitely more this speed as you could, you could tell from even my cauldrons, you can do that. But because it's cork, you could certainly go in and carve that out. So uh, because these light up, there we go. A whole different kind of Halloween tree, very Disney, right? With the little orange tree and that black sparkly glitter on the urn, glitter and sparkly. There's that velvet trim I was talking about. Remember how I said on the seal, you can use those over, over a knot just to cover that up. A beautiful use for those new seals. And then the candy. So if you look in there, she created those rock candy sticks with the black mica. We've seen, she did candy. I think it was last year she made those rock candy sticks, but I love seeing it with the black mica. And of course, all her candy is alcohol inked, right? So here she's got purple and orange and green where she colored the entire thing and the black remained black. Where this, you can go in and just paint a little detail. See, both are just absolutely brilliant. They both are just completely different aesthetic and and that's why I, I wish we could say that we planned it, but we don't plan it. But it's always so rewarding to see this because it just proves the fact that you can create a very, you can see something, whether it's in a live or whether it's on someone's blog or social media or Pinterest and say, man, I love these ideas. How would I create that? That's what I hope this enforces, that you can always uh, take an idea in whatever direction you want, especially with these domes. I love the display domes because it is a, a great way that you can create something uh, super charming. All right, next up, oh, this this is the fragile yeah, one. It is fragile. Yeah, Mario, I, as soon as I picked it up, Mario actually kind of held his breath. So I hope I don't break this, honestly, I mean that. Vicky created this, it is, it is a vignette. So I'll just show you like, it's designed to stand up, okay? There are two boxes designed to stand up. It's got so much detail, it's got the lock, the handle, uh, and how they're connected are these candle stands. Can you guys see them? Which is very cool, but it has very, very small contact point. So, you know, when, when it's shipping and stuff, sometimes it gets a, a little, a little loose, but I will do my best. There we go. So there's a little hanging sign, the apothecary. Okay. So this guy lights up I'm gonna light him up and you can see now I can just hold it flat and there is our baseboard windows in there. There's the cage, the mushrooms, look at the little bottles and layers. And again, you'll see a lot of uh, cool detail in the background, little, grungy things and little bits that are kind of fragmented out. We have that apothecary sign that's hanging. Let's see if I can get that. There we go. Look at the effect. I love the metallic finishes that Vicky creates. So she created this kind of test tube shelf. Can you see that? Which I'm sure she just went in with a drill because that's, that's her speed. Uh, drilled some holes and then she has these hanging test tubes. But take a look. I know that Vicky does resin. I know from the match. I'm just taking a guess here, but I know from when she did those those match boxes that these look like the bubbles suspended in resin, right? So we've got those acrylic bubbles in resin. Look at the little curator labels. Oh my gosh. And the lighting behind it. See, there's a little, there's the mystery right there, a the little light behind it just to light those up. And then we've got that whole series of candles, but again, dripping it around, just adding that extra element of hot glue to put those together. Because if you've made the, the drippy candles, you know, hot glue and paint and a little crayon, you're good to go. But I like, again, all those lights in the back behind those candles that just light that up. But there is the make uh, in its entirety. A very cool make of like a, I don't know, it's like a cabinet of curiosities. But that resin, mm, mm, mm. yeah, that resin is good. I think so many makers did like these, these cabinet inspired things of their, I don't know, their creepy dreams. <laughs> I do. I love it. Oh, you guys, I, I love looking over at the comments. I do. I mean, I'm, 
I, I admit that when it comes to these makes, I'm completely enamored because I haven't seen them yet in their detail, so I'm a bit more captivated. Um, but I do love to see that you guys uh, call out and support the, the makers and everything. Like, look at those eyes in the background. You guys see that? I just noticed them when I set it down, those eyes peering at you. Very cool. Easy, yeah. easy the resin. with that one. I know. I worked on that for days. <laughs> All right. We had a rough ride. Had a rough ride. Rough ride from Canada. All right. This one, this is another beauty. Okay, I've, I've got to fix it because I did get Jan's. This next one is Jan's and I did get her memo. And I'm, Jan, I tried. I really hope I, I did you justice. I tried so hard. I'm still trying. All right. I think it's just because I have like the fan here as well. So, right? Because nothing is broken on here. No. Nope. Okay, perfect. Just want to make sure I pick this up. All right. So I'm going to, I'll start here just so you can kind of see the detail, but I'll tip this back. So Jan created this coffin that is sitting on a foundation of a vignette box. And there are so many details in here. Uh, what I was talking about fixing is this, you see this smoke back here, right? So it's just, it's cool batting that uh, Jan tinted, but it's just like this mimics that, that kind of ethereal smoke coming up from uh, the cauldron and behind her. I love seeing that paper doll wrapped in mummy cloth, but isn't that so cool, right? It's so cool. All right, so this coffin, I think what's really great is to have the coffin that of course is, uh, is mounted onto a base. And that's the thing as a maker, you can have just the coffin uh, by itself, right? Just as it is where it can stand up. And I'm just kind of showing you all that little bit of like grit and grime and, and grungy detail if you want. But then you can also just mount it onto something and then you can continue all the way around with your story. Okay. So let's just start here at the top in the, in the little attic, if you will. There we've got little old books, right? We've got the drippy candles and I love that little wick in there. I love just kind of that shattered, almost kind of mica mirror. There's more books. There's that the mica flakes kind of spilled out from the bottle. You can see the spider there. There's that layer of the drapery in the back. If you look back here, there's an urn with, there we go, some of the flowers. There we go, it's focused. There's our cauldron. I love all that little detail of the grit paste. That grit paste really rocks it. And then take a look at uh, using the little cobblestone, right? Taking taking any kind of texture, whether it's, it's brick or stone and mimicking all sorts of walkways or outdoors, the busted up sticks to where it looks like the cauldron is just is simmering on the fire. As we go around, you'll see that she's got little stories, little clippings from the sticker book all the way around, just telling little details. But then when we get into these mushrooms, right? Take a look at those creepy eyes on the mushrooms and how she transformed the back of the vignette with wood grain cardstock. We saw that, um, when Tammy B did her make and then Zoe created the, the coffin as well, using a shape and using uh, embossed paper. Transforming the back of that, I just thought this was really a, a cool way to kind of cover up a lot of elements that, that are in the back. And then having the moss kind of coming through, the little bones busted out, right? And then as we get around, look at that. She's got a little skull head under that toadstool. But how cool are those toadstools now with that bright green moss and those creepy eyes? Toadstools never look so good. And then we've got curious things. But that's what I'm saying. This could this could totally wrap around and continue to tell a story. Now, there are tiny lights in there. I'll show you on this one. That's kind of the benefit. There you go, under the, underneath. The benefit, of course, having that, that foundation. There we go. Is that you can light it up. So there's our cauldron, bubbling cauldron lit up. There's There's some light kind of peering through everything else. Right. So even it goes behind the candle. So that candle kind of haunts that that green. But she added that little detail already to the wick right there. See, probably with, the, I don't know, maybe a little hot glue or something. I love seeing that wick on there, but lighting that up at night. So now the whole thing is going to have this eerie green glow kind of emanating from uh, the cauldron. You can see she's holding onto the cage. There's a raven in there. That's from the ephemera pack. Just packed with details, guys. Right. Packed. But seeing that like the mummy cloth just kind of wrapped around her and the, the little addition of the smoke is just very, very cool. What a, what a cool, wicked make, right? Just going around, just uh, unreal. But again, if you're just looking at this for ideas, all the things that I'm pointing out, these are things that I'm just noticing for the first time where I'm like, note to self, put eyeballs now in a cage, try eyeballs on a mushroom. That's what I've seen so far that I really like for the eyeballs. Love the idea of, 
having cauldron on busted sticks, check, right? Uh, try using cotton batting for smoke, check, right? So even if you're not creating this thing, it's all about those little details. And then just seeing this, like this is completely translucent. So you can see on the back, it starts with that transparency of the spider web. So you can see how you can, there you go, you can see my finger through there. So you can see through this, which I think is a whole other very cool detail layer. And there's a little spider uh, trapped in there. Like he's inside uh, in that web. Very cool. I love the books too. I love how all the makers just kind of have their books just disheveled, you know, stacked on shelves and, and just bent and torn. Just unbelievable. Yeah. Every time you turn it, I agree. You see something totally new. That's what it's all about. All right. You guys with me. We have three more makes to go through. Now these three makes, I'm just going to tell you right now. Okay. All the makes have been amazing. These are equally amazing, but they are massive. They, that is why I saved him at the end. Cause some people go, Oh, he, he builds up to this. I give credit to every single maker. Some makers just make big. And this one is huge. It is huge. And uh, we've already talked about this. I'm just going to bring it in. It's a double hander. Uh, Tammy B created this one. All right. Now she has a whole, she calls it something that honestly, guys, I could not even pronounce. So, and it's on the front of it. And I just said, I'm going to call this the cryptic triptych. Okay. That's what I'm calling it, but it's made up of vignettes and et cetera. And it probably used, I don't know, maybe 10 gallons of grit paste. Okay. So I'll, I'm going to lay it back now so you guys can see it. Okay. There we go. I'm trying to be really, really gentle. Like, I don't even know what to say. It's so here's a vignette tray as the base. We've got the foundations. Those are the foundation feet. I see metal gates here. Um, like in the back, that's the et cetera tombstone tops, right? I see those like little tombstones and the regular tombstone. But then I see the baseboard window. I see the gates, right? That's really cool. These I recognize. These are remnant rubs. You guys remember these? Maybe these are from last year. They're my favorites if you have them. I love seeing that where she kind of created this wall. It totally reminds me of Haunted Mansion. But there again, there's that baseboard window, but transformed with like grit and moss. And then there's all these bricks. So you can see like that busted out wall. I know that Zoe's like, I'm busting out a wall next. Like I saw that. But look at this thing too. I've not seen this done before. Look at this wheelbarrow created out of a vignette box. There's a pulley wheel. There are, looks like little corners right there and the little hardware, okay? So the cool thing about this, of course, she's got it to support those bones, holds those little bones, but everything is like gritty and dirty. Look at the urn with like the dried grass just kind of blown out of it. And like, look at the grave where she's got the bones and the skull coming out of the ground. And this, okay, this detail right here, let me just show you. I'm trying to hold on to it and I'll let it go. This whole idea, Busted off an urn. I mean, really, how many times have you, if you've been to a cemetery or graveyard where you see things that are just like busted off, right? I think just having that urn snapped off and right there, like that's, those are just the details. I would say those are the Disney details. Those are the little things that you would notice um, from a haunted mansion. But there's so much grit paste and grit and grime. And oh, it's just, it's such a fascinating display piece. There's kind of an aerial shot of it. So you can see all the textures and details and look at the little, see the little bricks down here. You can certainly see cause my thumb really illuminates it down there, but it's like, those are the bricks that kind of fell out of that opening of this crypt. Wow. 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 It's just, it's very cool. It's so cool. I'm just looking at all the details all the way around. So this must have been when, when we were having a, a meet, Tammy's like, oh, you should see how much paste I use. And I think her and Paula laughed about some make. This must have been the make you were talking about. Um, it's absolutely, yeah, it's pretty unreal. It's huge. It's absolutely beautiful. That's what she called it on the front. I can't read that. So I will call it the cryptic triptych. So Judah said inspiration from the Haunted Mansion. A little pose cask, mostly from the tour of Laurel Hill Cemetery in Philadelphia. Wow. It's just beautiful. So yeah, she said she used the crit paste and grave paste uh, all over. Just absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, so amazing. Love it. And I think the bricks on this one, I mean, I'm just looking at it when I take a closer look. I, I keep tipping this and I probably shouldn't. 
but I think these are more, I don't know, I want to say these are through a stencil versus the, I mean, you could certainly do that with the embossing folder, but I think these are done through uh, the mini layering stencil, if I'm not mistaken. If Tammy B's here, then she could probably either confirm or deny that, but I kind of feel that's what this is because these are definitely uh, like a rough texture and maybe that's what kind of created that, that fracture, but you could certainly mimic it with uh, the 3D. Unreal, right guys? Someone just yeah. asked how heavy is it? Um, it's it's actually pretty heavy. Um, I don't know if you you kind of see like um, it's I mean, it's pretty heavy. It, it is everything's hollow, but I think because of all the paste on there, it's a it's not super heavy. And I think that this probably just needs stuck down this little wheelbarrow because maybe I tipped it too much because of the weight of those bones. So I'll put a little collage medium in there. But yeah, I just it's not super heavy. I mean, you you could definitely pick it up with with yeah, one. Maybe, no, I mean you could you could totally pick it up with one hand, but yeah. it's just. Maybe it's it's heavy it's like it's heavy on the back just because that's where everything is but it's just beautiful right such a a very very cool cool thing i love seeing the, the texture epic indeed right all right two more makes but again you'll see like just too big they couldn't even go into a basket with anything else right so stacy created this this tree house it's i mean it's i don't even know how big this branch was but it's a it's a cool branch so this tree house is the foundation, of course, is the vignette shrine, right? But again, so many different details. So look at like the little stitched textured paper that is intertwined and wrapped around this vignette shrine. Again, the little details of those curator labels just tucked in here and there. That's the fun thing. So you could even just go in, just taking the background paper, start with your backdrops, take your ephemera, your creator, if you, if you like to sew, zip it through your sewing machine and then cut it up for uh, what you want to use it with, right? Because you can curl the edges, you can tear off some elements. It's just a, a great effect. You can see that little bit of mica stain. You've seen mica stain pretty much throughout uh, many of these makes. But then again, it's just that haunting story. So we've got this mossy stick. Stacy loves to always uh, throw a stick at us. This one's a good one, Stacey, really good. But here we've got that, that window, right? That baseboard window you can see there's the mica in there that's kind of fractured but we've got this girl out here that's holding the key and these two are trapped inside you can see using the lock and a little chain it's like they're just locked up like she's an angry little fairy right she is there's the drippy candles that, that come out on that that ledge little bottles of potion everywhere so you can see the little bottles tucked in there there's some of the tiny cork vials that's a nice thing about those they're super tiny and then we've got this other little box that is hanging from jute from this box. And there's the cage again, more vials. There's some books in there, the little bones, a little skull, because remember this cage, even if you cut out the back, right. Or you remove some of the elements, it does allow you to put things in and you don't notice it from the front. So if you're wondering like, how do they get the skull in there? The bones, some stuff you can slide through in between, but if you want something big in there, just cut the, the pieces in the back right? Or like how Sharon did it, cut it and just kind of bend it. So pieces are, are coming out, but it's a very cool transformation. I don't think we've ever seen a vignette kind of turned into uh, kind of this, this birdhouse treehouse looking uh, thing. And I love it. I love the, just the texture of, of what that, that provides. And you can see here the spider. And of course it hangs from this jute. This is just a, it's an epic make, right? It's all these little details. I was telling you that is probably going to be one of my most uh, favorite ephemera packs, those little curator snippets, because you think, oh, there's 200 some, that's a lot. Not when you're using them. It's, it's a lot. Everything's a lot if you don't use it, but if you use it, that's why you need it. Because just this project alone, there's got to be, you know, maybe 20 plus pieces uh, just tucked between the background or a bottle or labeled onto something. But yeah, what a creepy story. <laughs> Very cool, Stacy. Very cool. All right. We're in the home stretch. We've got one more make. And this is a make that um, Paula shared with me early on. So Paula created this one and I'm glad that she powered through on it because it was a big undertaking. I'm like, you have got to do this because I, I'm going to make this. It does have tiny lights. I'm gonna light it up right from, right from go. But this is, this is what it looks like from the aerial shot, right? So Paula constructed this and this is done um, using vignette boxes, right? And you can see there's a, a lot of cool pieces. Oh, this lights up. Oh, yes. thanks. You're welcome. Thanks. Mario's kind of being secret. Okay, not gonna show you Paula's yet. 
I didn't know it lit up. And I even I even turned it over. And normally I kind of feel the I think I was more fascinated with the, the trees. Look, how did I miss that? You guys, you know me and tiny lights. How did I miss that? Oh, well, that makes it. Oh, look at that. Thanks. Who told you it lit up? Paula or Stacy? Well, no, you figured. Oh, you knew because you put the batteries in. Oh, well done, Mario. Look at those wings. See, I didn't even notice that. See, I dig that. Transparent wings. That's what it's all about. Oh, see, I didn't even notice the skull in there either. Very cool. See, there's a lot of details I didn't. The power of tiny lights. That's what I got to tell you. I don't make I love I that. pay attention. Well, Mario, he, he tests all the batteries, so that's why he's like our battery guy. He makes sure everything lights up on camera. Thanks, Mario. I, I would regret missing that because that, that does. It changes everything because now you really notice those two in that box. Tell you guys, light your makes up light them up yes i know i have to get micro tiles yeah well when you see this one uh you will you'll say that again all right so um i'm i'm guessing this one's pretty stable so i'm going to just kind of go for it all right i always get nervous when things have a, a vertical make to it but this is this is the make that paula created and i i call this like the cabinet of curiosity as well that's why i said i'm going to totally make this because i'm telling you you could go creepy and you could put whatever you want. This to me, this make would be amazing at Christmas time to make each little window almost like a little store window between Christmas trees and all that. This, as a Disney fan, I would put little Disney memorabilia in here. I mean, this idea, and this is what I was trying to tell you. Like I, I practice what I preach, guys. I'm inspired by the idea. I always am, I'm blown away by the detail and what people do and the texture and the layers and like the stitching of paper, but every idea has merit whether it's extravagant or simple and even if you go down to the foundation of this make i haven't even i haven't even gone into the detail yet because i haven't even looked into these windows yet but the concept because that's all she shared with me she stacked up these boxes they weren't even glued she had these leaned up because we did size these these new baseboard frames we size them to fit the vignette boxes right but sometimes we do stuff at the beginning that we totally forget about when the product actually comes to market and when I saw it, I'm like, oh my gosh, they fit vignettes. She goes, remember, you wanted them size that way. I'm like, oh yeah. But then seeing it, it just opened up the ideas. So the thing about this whole, and she's got curious things, putting it on some type of, of base or foundation, and you can start with whatever, like, so this is just going to be a vignette panel, right? Or it could be deeper if you wanted to use a box, or you could cut a piece of wood. You can use et cetera trims, which Paula did here. And again, it's all about having that die now that allows us to die cut paper to fit the die. So the die is from Sizzix, the trims are from Stampers Anonymous. But then each one of these vignette boxes are wrapped inside and out with all the cool different backdrop papers. Then we've got the wonderful baseboard windows. And then, yeah, we've been talking about so much mica because the mica tiles and really the mica tiles, it's all about peeling it apart. Because when you get them, they're, they're like dark brown kind of shards and you just peel them apart thin. And the thinner you peel them, the more fractured you get that whole shattered glass. But look at these levitating boys in this first window. See, their feet aren't even on the ground. That's so cool that they're levitating. The tiny light, she's got kind of tucked, intertwined around. So it casts that eerie green glow all the way down here. Kind of like the, you see the little fortune teller in the back, the gypsy fortune teller. I also love that. Look at the drippy candle painted black with that little bit of glitter on there and the detail. It is always about the details. I agree. But all of these are kind of like fractured, fragmented windows. But it's really the positioning of the lights as well that is important to take note. Here we've got the glow coming in from the top and the sides. This window, we've got the glow coming in here. And this one is emanating from down here, right? So keep in mind when you're kind of weaving those tiny lights around, um, of different places that you want to kind of to put those in. I think that's the, the important thing to remember uh, as far as the tiny lights is how you want to intertwine them starting in one and then wrapping it all the way around. All right. So then when we go into this room, you can see that stack of books. And I love how these are these have been split open. Right. Just kind of imagine just cut down the middle to open them up from a from the window that they are. But you can see the stack of books. There's the pumpkin. A little bottle in there it's all about those labels guys every little label that you've seen in all these makes i'm telling you it is curator uh times 100. another cool thing these are the hardware heads these are part of ideology they're small little 
hardware heads. They're flat back, so you glue them on, but that's what really makes a lot of these elements look like they have been uh, riveted on or screwed on. Then as we get to the top, look at that mini pocket watch. I love that the skull and crossbones fits in there. Would I say that I knew that? I would not, but I'm happy he does because that, that little mini pocket watch is part of ideology. I love seeing him in there all creeped out with crayon. Another drippy candle for the win. Some little book pages. Again, just, just a little bit of mummy cloth. Just pulled out the window. That's what it's all about. Love seeing the toadstool. Love that it's got a little shorter stem. And there's our skull in there. See the raven on? There you go. Do you guys see that? Oh, there we are. So there's a raven sitting on his head in this window. And then that little mini flare of the clock. And the mini flare, you can do a lot of things. You can cover it with resist spray. You can do crayon. You can smash it with a hammer. You can do all sorts. And then look at that creepy eye in the cage, right? So you got that eyeball wrapped up in some mummy cloth, another part of that little curator. And then we have the lock and the chain. All those elements that we've done for Halloween just comes together to create, uh, honestly, the most frightening, uh, just incredible makes that I've seen. I, I tell you, it's just, this is what makes ideology 2021 Halloween absolutely magical.